Hey Arizona, just because weed is legal now doesn't mean your criminal record is clear. You need to visit azexpunge.org today. The Reclaim Your Future campaign can expunge your record for free. Go to azexpunge.org now.
Hey Arizona, just because weed is legal now doesn't mean your criminal record is clear. You need to visit azexpunge.org today. The Reclaim Your Future campaign can expunge your record for free. Go to azexpunge.org now.
Hey Arizona, just because weed is legal now doesn't mean your criminal record is clear. You need to visit azexpunge.org today. The Reclaim Your Future campaign can expunge your record for free. Go to azexpunge.org now. Disclaimer, this video, like all videos featured on this channel, is definitely intended for mature audiences. This video is likely to contain profane language. Content is inappropriate for minors. Video is not for kids. Welcome to the Dr. Green Dumb Show. Not an Lots of help is needed up in here. It's the Dr. Green Thumbs Show live on Twitch, Discord, YouTube, the home site, www.bereal.tv. What it do? I got to my right, Mr. Goodlight, DJ C Minus. What up, everybody? And a very special guest up in here, the legendary John B. What's going on? Up up? in this. Hell yeah. Nice to be here, man. Thank you for having me. Good to have you up in here, bro. Absolutely, bro. We got the Treehouse crew, Bro- Bolton, Blombo, Bra Bra, and the Dominator. Yo, yo, how you doing, B? I am good. We have the Concentrate King, Cali Blake. What up, guys? Uh, the, the Mr. Big Drum is not present today. Um, he'll he'll be back in house on Wednesday. Um, John, man, it's it's good to have you up in here, man. Absolutely good to be here, baby. Yes, good indeed. Here, it's been a minute since we've seen each other. Yeah. Absolutely. I but, think we saw each other at the Snoop Dogg and DJ Quick. Yeah. And uh, everything was going on down in LA. Yeah. One of these events. And I caught you backstage. I was like, peace. That's right. Yeah. That's man. right, man. Yeah. It was just a matter of time before we got you up in here. And you said something interesting that, that like that that geeked all of us out right before we started about like how you like edibles and oh, yeah. the consumables. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, you smoke too. Absolutely. Um, dabs, but, smoke. But, but the dab, but but the dab, yeah, the dabs, yeah, mm-hmm. and and the edibles, because not everybody likes leaning towards that. They're a little bit of afraid of it, but not no, you, my yeah. friend. No, no, no. I mean, I love what 
weed does for me in general. You know what I mean? Just however I ingest it, whether it's, you know, in pill form or if it's a soda. Yeah. If it's a, it's a joint, whether it's hash or whether it's flour or whether, you know, we're dabbing or whatever, I just feel like it's all in the same sort of world. And it's, uh, I feel very comfortable in that world. See, I think he would love yeah. the gel caps. 100, I think he said he took a few before. He yeah. Did. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Got it. yeah. yeah. In the right place. You know, that for me was something that was kind of hard to maintain in terms of like my headspace. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for a long time, um, being that it's kind of hard to get weed when you're on the road in every different city, you know what I'm saying? And if it is weed, then it's what kind of weed is it? Right. And that. So, that part. You know? <laughs> yeah. So there'll be a different like, energy when you get it something consistent like in pill form that you can take anywhere you're at and it's just um all of a sudden now we're 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 even yeah you know what i mean in terms of the energy where you how you feel traveling for me is kind of an anxiety situation you know um i don't know why but i just i'm always checking my pockets making sure i have everything and just because it's a lot you know yeah. every time yeah. i've done it it's a million you know I've, I've done it a million times but i still get that little bit of a heartbeat going so when i you know take a thc thc pill or you know something one-to-one -one, cbd and thc mellows that you out. really mellows me out and it's it is medicine i mean it is a, absolutely yeah. you know oh yeah so i don't look at it as like getting buzzed or in, in a sense like getting out of my headspace instead That's of taking I'm, a xanax you take a weed yeah i'm getting into which my is headspace. better for you of course yeah. It is. yeah yeah what i look at as like getting into my headspace as far as like rather than getting out of my headspace, like really. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely, man. Uh, it, it's definitely helping people in that regard because, yeah. like, the, you know, it could, like, if, if you don't have the tolerance that some of us do, it could give you anxiety. Oh, oh it will. For yeah, sure. it will, for sure, for sure. Don't try to, <laughs> no. you know, get out of your, swim out of your, you know, your comfort zone in terms of how the depth of what this could be because, boy, it could get deep and, I don't, I've never swam out of my depth so far. Oh, good you know what I mean? I've never. Right. It's important to know that. I mean, because yeah. a lot of people have a great time when they know, yeah. right? When yeah. they don't know and they're trying to go beyond that, then yeah. the, the ride gets taken now back. When you, back. Now, when you take it into like shrooms and all that, that's where I'm kind of like, I, I pause, you know what so I mean? You have, so have, you haven't Be done shrooms or you? Well, I have. You just took too much or what? Well, it's just, to, for me, it's just an un, I can't predict that at all at all it's too as intense times, or something as many times as i've done that mm. i can't predict what it's going to be like for me because it's a different mm. yeah you know, i think if you're doing too much premeditated thought you're already like mushrooms is it's one of those things you, you yeah. really got to be like i want to right. do this you yeah, know what i right. mean like yeah. and if you do that you'll have a better but if you go in there like last time i did it kind of didn't make me feel <laughs> yeah good. then you're gonna and, take that with you yeah and, and oh, if you yeah. have any issues like in your mind at that point you have to deal with it, it you're gonna <laughs> deal with that in those moments like uh, you have to like totally be over whatever the hell it is you know whatever head trip it is or you know if you have a guide you can engage it and get over it there you go. But most people don't go with guides. Most people are like, you know what? This is like recreational, and I'm right. just going to melt. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, we've done that. Yeah. I don't ever think I've done the therapeutic aspect right. of it because, you know, we were wild and crazy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But these days, like, if I had something that was, like, you know, like bothering me that bad that, you know, hey, can we do this type of therapy? Right. I want to connect the dots and release it. Yeah, I'm with that. Because they are yeah. doing that. They sure are. You know what I mean? I'm with that. Mm. You know, and, it, and it's kind of like an involuntary thing that happens for me when, when I take shrooms where it's all of a sudden now there's a like purging process of emotionally you don't want to be around me because I start talking and it'll be like, well, what about this? <laughs> and I, <laughs> and uh, sometimes it's not all sunny and, and, and beautiful. Sometimes it's dark. But I, think yeah. it, but I think in that, that regard too, but you're right on that. You know, if you're on... If you're shrooming on your own, like if you're the only one in the room, then it, yeah, it can be dark because your your thoughts get the best of you. Yeah. But when, <laughs> but when every everybody is shrooming and everybody's on the same page and you got the people I with the it. right vibes, yeah, like, it's a different sort of energy yeah, and I connection. Love it. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll you can laugh it. for hours like that. It will take yeah. one person to mess that up. Like <laughs> yeah. if they come with bad yeah. energy, you know. Always, what I mean? absolutely, yeah. it's very. 
That's what I felt on shrooms was it's very careful. Right. I mean, it's about, you know, being careful with that because it's, it is your mind, you know, and that's sort of like rabbit hole. Yeah. Any, any direction you could go down with yeah. any sort of thought process. And the more you take, the more you're liable to pick any door and all of a sudden go through that door and now you're tripping like whatever. <laughs> right. Tripping so, balls. Yeah, I just like the weed because it's sort of like the, the level playing field for me. And it's a good, good creative energy. I feel motivated to be creative and think yeah. outside the box of what, you know, it was to be raised in school, to, to think a certain way. Um, and how the common sense takes over when you, when you smoke. It's not about so much book smart or this and that, but more about, I feel like, intuition smart. Yeah. You know what I mean? Common sense ain't yeah. that common anymore. Common sense yeah. ain't that common, but nah, it should no. be. <laughs> yes. It right. Should. Oh, my common God. Common sense ain't that common. No, yet. it ain't, man. It's for, yeah. Well, you know, I don't Rare. think you have a good sense of common sense right. unless you have guidance from, like, people that, that teach you the difference between you know, good shit and foul shit. Yeah. I think that's the common sense is having that, you know, you can differentiate. You don't need to be taught. You have that. Well, like, it you depends know. how you're that's raised right. and where you grow up. That's yeah. it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's it. You know what I mean? Like some people will give you game and be like, hey, man, you know you shouldn't be doing that. And you yeah. might think about it. Like, you know what? He's right or she's right. You some know what I mean? Well, you can't give But if game. you got no guidance at all, you might know, but it's like, hey, man, get out of here with that shit. You got to do what you got to do mentality and and totally erase yeah. what you might have there because it, it all depends on that especially when you're really young when you come into your teens midway for 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 us you might get a sense of it then but even then not so much you're just going you're like yeah. in the moments as opposed to like there's you know a small percentage of kids that like you know think past the moments that's very true you know what i'm saying very true yeah, those are called what, those are called geniuses. <laughs> well, I think that <clears throat> I think that music had a lot to do with that. My yeah. whole process of thinking <clears throat> outside the box, as I, I was saying before, like of whatever anybody's limitations that they tried to make me think growing up. I was like, music just made everything seem possible. Yeah, you know what I mean. It was yes. like, oh, what style of music? <laughs> they pick it, and I'm into it. You know, and yeah. I want to learn about. It. I want to reverse engineer what that is like how did they make that sound and okay now let me try to do that and sort of you know imitate start with imitation and then then all of a sudden in in trying to imitate you come up with your own shit yeah yeah that's you know hey saying? man that's that's like a part of inspiration like yeah. you're inspired by this and you like learned it front to back and then you get something of your own out of it yeah, yeah. you know and that's that's where it all starts yeah um, yeah. And that is the beautiful thing about music, man. Yeah. You know, it's just too too bad there's less of it th this these days that are in that vein. Yeah, true. Yeah, you know, I think I think you'll hear <clears throat> you'll hear it, but it's like in the you have to hunt for it. Small you know pockets. I mean? Yeah, look for it now. <clears throat> it's like crate digging. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. You gotta look for it now. That's but everything. I'm still in my crate digging. I'm still going back to Amoeba. And buying, you know, my chic records and my, you know, and my and my and my D train and like, you know, I'm just trying to go back to the time where music felt a certain way and bring yeah. that home on a vinyl to where every time I'm cleaning up my house or if I feel a certain way. But even though, even even so, like, even beyond vinyl, putting on YouTube and just finding something on YouTube, anything, yeah, you know what I mean, and just putting it on and letting it play. Usually for me, it's like some old 80s or some late 70s or just some something funky that's that brings a nice, cool energy to the house. Yeah. And um, yeah, but I'm a, also a multi, uh, a very eclectic kind of guy. You like I, all I, sorts of different I, genres. Everything, man. Yeah. Yeah, I really, the only thing I really don't mess with too much is like country music. You know, that's that's a lot of us. Me, you know what I mean? <laughs> Is that right? I mean, there's a, there's there's. I mean, one I'm not I'm not knocking it because there, there's probably some really dope country soul oh, yeah. country there. There is. I've heard a few songs. I'm like, okay, but the genre itself, I just can't. Yes, play. there are some country right. songs I like, but I'm not necessarily a country music genre fan. Like, not that. At I all. couldn't tell right. you I mean too either. much about it. Yeah. You know, I do yeah. know that 
the cut the, the genre though they support their artists no matter what it, there, there's no man ages, do they there's no ages bullshit and they have the best sound in the world yeah man it's like you go to their shows and like i remember i saw vince gill sing back at a award show back in the day or some some show yeah and i was just like god his voice sounds clear it's Oh, yeah, you know, they like, can yeah. sing, and yeah, I mean, man. they can, they and they're talented. Yeah, so it's like sure. hey, singing, singing. I think it's really for me. It's just the stylistic yeah. differences in our the way that we do our thing that makes it more of like okay, that's not my thing. Yeah, but I can appreciate the musical, you know, the level that they they take their serious. Oh yeah, you know, how serious they take the music. I mean, you go to Nashville, that's like the town. I mean, music is art. It's you know it's, it's subjective. It's not you know. There's some art we're gonna like, some art right. that, that will appreciate, but it's not necessarily what we feel. You know what I mean? Exactly. And yeah. I'll say this about country music. Again, they they celebrate an artist from start to finish. There's no ageist bullshit that happens in that genre like it does hip hop. We need to take that shit out of hip hop and. Be like this age shit ain't nothing but a number because right. there are artists today right now in their 50s that are making great songs yeah. e artists older than that in their yeah. mid 50s and, and what making great songs it's just that record companies again they don't like we've talked about it before they don't know how to sell to that age they they you know they figure audience keeps getting younger in hip-hop it does but it's also getting older. It's it's going both ways. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So remove the ages. And, and also, who's buying the tickets for the kids to the shows? Right. You know what I'm saying? It's the adults. Some of them are even it's coming not, with it's not. It's not the kids that don't have the money. It's the adults that do. Yeah. And some so of my them, thing is like, you know, that's who's buying tickets to shows. And that's who's buying albums. And that's who's, you know, buying whatever. Paying for the, the iTunes or whatever, yeah. you know? Right. So I think that it's, it's subjective in terms of like, if their labels want to put their... You know their emphasis on young, that's well, their choice. But that I think that it's kind of like well, cause, limiting because they don't. Yes, it is because they're. It's like an age old model that they have. They you know that they don't know how to reach the fans that grew up with this. They're constantly that's too much money and research and trying to pull that kind of marketing off. So they gear it towards the young. So in hip hop, when you're thirty, they're trying to push you out already. And some of us have crushed that. Mm -hmm. and shown that that is some bullshit right but this is what they try to do right because it's easier to push off a young artist when the artist gets older they don't necessarily know where and how to market them they think well they're too old to connect Boy, with I these young all folks about that <laughs> yeah they're too old to connect with these young folks so what do we do with them you know and they really don't still to this day people have connected dots through the independent releases and stuff like that they know where their audience is at you just have to let them know that there's product out there you know what yeah, i mean because th think about it like this right that's right we're we're in like i'm in my 50s i grew up to hip-hop there's people my age men and women that still listen to hip-hop old and new right now and if and when an album comes out that we might be like excited about or we might want to hear we'll go go out and buy it problem is is again the labels don't know how to connect the dots on us so instead of telling us hey this record's for you it's coming out um x y and z we have to be the ones to go find that yeah and then we and then they get the record sales but it's like you know we have to go find it yeah they they really have left it in the uh it's weird because <clears throat> it's it's kind of like a double it's it's a crossroads that I, I feel every artist, especially in our in our position, has to face in terms of um, being independent and knowing your worth, but at the same time knowing what the corporate, you know, the basically the bank <laughs> is also worth in terms of like that leverage and that kind of like you know, placement in terms of like the stores back when we had physical product yeah. to actually sell. But then in this case, it's digital product. So it's like the digital placement and all this stuff. Yeah. So all of that is leverage, right? And, and I feel like, you know, <clears throat> art has no, it has no real value anymore in a sense of like, other than what the labels want to give the art the value if right. they want to make it look valuable they'll make it look valuable if they want to just make it look like oh yeah here's this it's just whatever yeah it's out then they'll just put it out like that and to me it's like any any product is 
if you market it like on that level, it'll be sort of like it's success is sort of like subject to, you know, to how much independent real, you know, marketing is going on. How much is this, you know, brand being sold at different shops and blah, blah, blah. You know what yeah. I mean? In any product, if you think about it. So my thing is the only way that I can control my actual essence in the world <clears throat> right now, other than what people buy on iTunes or whatever they see on the, you know, YouTube or whatever, is to do shows. Yeah. Is to literally be up in front of people's face. Look, I'm still here. Yep. I'm still doing this. And I don't care what the label said. I don't care what whoever said. Right. I don't care if my record's playing on the radio. I'm here. So what's up? You you down to come see a show? You know what I mean? You down to come see me rock? Because yep. I'm here. So, you know, as long as I can still do shows, they, they can't stop it. You know what I mean? So, hey, and if you're knocking the shows down, you know what I mean? Um, you're winning people over every time. That's right. And, that's and, right. and that's the key, especially if you're playing like, because I don't know if you're seeing this, you know, like, I know in hip hop or, you know, we've been seeing it. And I'm sure you have to have been seeing it. There's a lot of younger audience coming to the shows these days. Like, and, yeah. and it's because you know, they're, they're going to Spotify and they're listening to what we are now labeled as legacy artists. Right. And getting familiar with our, with our music. And then whenever we come to one of their cities, Oh, let's go see them. Right. And you, you see them there and, and, they're getting um they're getting familiar with our music. It's and, yeah. and and that's a great thing, man. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Um That is, man. So it's 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 it for me it that's crazy to see is that the audience is still getting younger, but they're still fucking with the music. Yeah. A lot and, of them a lot of them was ra raised by their parents playing our music for them. Yeah. You know what I mean? And just they see the the parents light up in a certain way where they're like Oh man, that's I, that's my music, you know, because that's the way I, that's my dad's music, or that's my mom's song, you know what I mean? So it's like it, they just adopt it to the, be their own because it's part of their DNA, you know, it's part of the, yeah. How about know. that? Is it like you know, like hip hop artists, like the first few generations, <coughs> um, first four, I would say, <coughs> we all grew up to different music, right? Um, sort of like whatever our parents were listening to, or our siblings, or aunts or uncles or something like that <coughs> um we didn't necessarily grow up to hip-hop some of us caught it halfway through you know being a kid and whatnot but now you have generations a couple that have been raised by parents that hip-hop was their genre of music yep. they, yeah, yeah they listened to all this other shit but like hip-hop was their main shit oh yeah that. And yeah. so a lot of these kids are raised by, <laughs> you know, these hip hop heads. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so they could potentially go to a hey, I want I want you to go to a Wu Tang Clan show. I want you to see what real hip hop is, or uh, we're gonna go see um, Tribe Called Quest or whoever. You know what I'm saying? And there's that connection where you have you know these parents and their kids like raising their kids in hip hop, and whatever they do with it after that is what they do with it. But as long as they got an understanding and love for it, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. I think that's everything. But that's crazy because hip-hop now has that under the belt. Like, yeah. R&B has had it for years. Oh, I was raised by, you know, my mother but who was- hip-hop now man. got it now. It's hip -hop been- Hip-hop got it now, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, for that's sure. That's real, real shit right mm -hmm. there. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. uh, you know, so salute to hip-hop. But, yeah, you know, the, let's take the ages- um, uh, label off of it though because absolutely. you can do great hip hop at any age I mean you look at KRS-One he's still killing shit yeah absolutely hell yeah and I just feel like your mind just gets more you just get more well versed with your thought process anyways yeah, yeah. as an adult wouldn't you want to know what I'm thinking now with all so much more to offer you right you know through experience not just not just coming off the because a lot of a lot of what we do is sort of creative whim, right? Right. You know? But then there's a lot of experience in that, too. True that. Yes. yes. And whether you're just having your first experiences and you're sharing that, or whether you have years and years of experience and you're sharing it, I just feel like, man, why wouldn't I want to know? If I'm a fan of your music, why wouldn't I want to know what you're thinking now, you know, at 50 or whatever, 50 plus, you know what I'm saying? Because um, they, no, they don't want no knowledge 
being dropped on these young folks in terms of hip hop. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? It's like hip hop is a tool to like guide these kids. They know it. So if if we allow like negative music out there, we're gonna get that result and get the prisons filled, which they make money off of. As that's that's what they do. You know what I mean? And as opposed to having some G's up there saying some shit that these kids could learn from and be inspired by in a yeah. different way. Yeah. Then, oh, I got to be flipping these bricks. I got to be popping these pills. I got to be like, you know, just out there wilding the fuck out. That's life. It, that ain't life, but that's what you see in some of these videos. So <laughs> you know what it is. You know, a lot of these fans want to emulate the artists that they love and they're inspired by. And this is what you see. If that's all you see, too. If that's all you see, which, you know, like, Obviously. I hope it doesn't not to cut you oh, off ahead, but, but I hope it doesn't end up being like the kind of thing where it's 30 years of this where we're at right now in hip hop where it's like Oof, all no you way. get is this so nah, that it'll they, evolve they, you know yeah. it always so evolves, much yeah. like I look at like R&B it's on another you know it's another another page right another style of music yes yeah but there's so many styles that come back in R&B. Yes. Mm-hmm. That are not even like 90s or whatever. They're like 80s and 70s. Yeah. Style. Generations of it. Generations of R&B coming back, getting sampled, blah, 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 and flipped yeah. and stuff like that. Or resung. And resung and stuff like that. All of that. And, and, and I want to say that that's happening in hip hop too. Yeah. Uh, but more lyrically, I think, than than actually like tracks. Well, maybe it's starting to be tracked. Maybe it's probably starting to be both. Like a little you know? bit of both, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, if that's all we get and that's all we're handing down, I just, I feel like really what it is is what, what's the, the missing plot is it's, the, it's what we put in the music. Yeah. It's not just, you know, having a dope sample or whatever and reflipping that and being like, okay, that was successful, so I'm going to use that and be successful again with my song you know what's crazy is that that that's what labels used to do in all genres of music like have their artists okay if you want to be creative and make your own shit cool but we need you to make this cover song right here. right right because we know it's gonna be (laughs) because we know that's safe you know what i mean i mean even in rock music i mean van halen always had a cover song going in because that radio cut because they knew that would go yeah you know and that was always the safe route in hip-hop Never used to do that. I think maybe Snoop was the first one. He was, who I believe, covers. Yeah, yeah, he was the first one to ever do a cover with Snoop. With the well, Lottie. excuse me, oh, the slick excuse, drink. excuse me. Um, Run DMC was the first to cover a song. Bam, Wasn't right? hip hop though. No, right? Correct. Snoop uh, was the first. Walk this way. Yes, walk uh, this way. Yeah, they did like a but, rendition. Of but it. what Snoop did different there was yes. that he covered a hip hop song. Yes. Whereas Run DMC was re- covering a rock song. And and a hip hop cover at that time was pretty much unheard of. Unheard of, yeah. Because everyone was striving to be original at that point, you know. So it's like when they were like, when Snoop was like, "I want to cover this song," and he did it. He covered two, as a matter of fact. Yeah, he did. He did a. Oh, he did children's vapors. story, and he did a. Yeah, and the vapors. And he did. Vapors. And he did the vapors. Yeah, uh, Biz Marquis. Marquis. He killed that. Ooh. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he. Yeah. I think once that first one hit for him, he was like, Psh, I, "This is this is the formula." You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I think you kind of when you when he did that, you could expect him. What's he gonna do next? Kind of a thing. Yeah. Well, now you're gonna hear more artists doing that. Yeah. I mean, no one really caught on to it, but realistically, he got hits out of both those songs. And oh, I like yeah. the way you pay homage that way in terms of yeah. like if you grew up being a diehard of hip hop. Then yeah, it makes you it makes you happy to remake a song that you it's part of your you know, you growing up and all yeah, if it, yeah. like I want to really, do that though. I want to do a dope remake of like what song would you would you remake? Oh, man, I think for me, I gotta go into like the the depths of R and B and pick the songs that sort of got overlooked but are still so classic to me. Yeah, that aren't the, that aren't the generic records that everybody would expect yeah. me to do. I'll go to Alexander O'Neill. Ooh. Oh, yes. and I would hey. do the record. Um, if you were here. Oh, that's the song oh, right there. there. there that's the joint right there, boy. Him and uh, Sherelle, when they used to get down, oh. that they, they were a good combo. Yeah. See, that would be the, if I was going to do that with, with somebody, like a female, I'd yeah. redo, the, of course, I'd redo Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. <laughs> you know I'd redo that. You know I'd redo that. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah. You know, that was that the jam, pick. Absolutely, bro. Hey, he was uh, originally one of the, 
he was a, in the time for a second as a drummer, right? Yeah, yeah well, he, so. yeah, he was, uh, he was a drummer, and then uh, he so ma- he had made uh, he had ma- he was supposed to be the time lead singer for the time. He was. Yeah, he was supposed to be. I thought he was going to be the drummer. But they no, they had uh, Prince had had a meeting with him, and he made all these demands, and Prince was like, "Yo, he's so like, he, fuck out of here." He was like, <laughs> he was like Morris, you're going to be the new lead singer, and we're going to put Jelly Bean on drums, and that's it." But Jam and Lewis, boy, they laced him with Ooh, some they sure records, did. boy. Like Man. they, I mean, they sure did. Those out those were hits. That's I think some of my favorite R and B of all time, especially modern more modern R&B, yes. like when there were synthesizers and drum machines being used primarily and stuff, rather than live drums and just guitars and basses. And yeah. Like, you know, so for me being that I was just really getting into synthesizers and drum machines and production and all of that at a, at a young age, at, you know, probably 16 years old, those were my guys that were yeah. influencing me the most. You know, Teddy Riley, yeah. yes. you know, L.A. Reed and Babyface, you know yeah. what I mean? Uh, so I was paying attention to all that and sort of reversing the process of how they made their music in my head. Like, maybe they did it like this. Maybe they used this sound, you know? And I'd go and sample records, and that's how I kind of got into production in terms of, like, different producers, like DJ Quick and Dr. Dre and everything was actually sampling their sounds first. Right. Because when they gave you a free sample, and your, and your music as well, brother, you know what I'm saying? Um, oh, right on, man. You know what I mean? Uh sampling like a snare that was free here or a clap that was free here or whatever and just yeah. flipping it and put it in my music and you might you might know or you might not but you know it's like if you're a diehard you probably that, if that you're was studying the sounds you would definitely know that was the formula but that's that's what it was making music back then um you know in probably like 89 it's probably 88 yep. when i first probably started with production and all that so Right around that time, Alexander O'Neill, yeah, all man. that. Hey, know, he had dude. such a unique voice, that dude. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It was different. <laughs> and that Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis production was just, I mean, the roof. Something to study, though. For yes, real, you know, because their chord progressions weren't all all over the place and super like yep. jazzy and hard to learn. You could sit down at the piano and sound it out, and that's what, how I learned some of my first chords. You know what really? I mean? Really? Yeah, man. You know, playing a song like Can You Stand the Rain, you know what I mean? Like just on that's, the piano. That's the wow. jam right you know there, what I mean? boy. You know what I mean? Take it back. Ooh, yeah, man. Yeah, you know what I mean? Those, just, days, those yeah. chords were so simple for me to learn. Or like even like Teddy Riley, like with Guy, you know what I mean? Ooh. Guy, you know? Did you know how to play the piano beforehand or you were just sounding it out and figuring it out? That's how. That's how really? Sounding wow. it out, figuring it out. I, no one showed me. Wow. My mom was is still a concert pianist and oh so it was just piano it was in you somewhere she taught piano for 35 years but she couldn't teach me really wow because i'll sit at the you know she'd say these are the notes and i'd be like okay cool and then she's like are you paying attention to the notes and i was like no i just memorized it she's like, can you read music now like can you nah. read it nope you just but play you know it. you right. like, play it that's like stuff it's like Steph looking at like braille for me yeah. I, I couldn't tell you what that said hey so a lot of the greatest artists man they that's didn't right. they didn't know how to read or write music <coughs> nope. but they knew how to play it that's right yeah. I mean, if you're in an orchestra or something, you need to know you how to need read. To know how to play. If you're in a rock band yeah. like that, you just need to know how to create it. That's it. I mean, I know a little bit of theory because I went to arts high school where they made you study theory and stuff like that. So I know a little bit. Did you grow up out here? Be, yeah. Cool. Yeah, I grew up here. I yeah. went to um, Loxa, um, which is right here in East LA and like at Cal State LA campus. Yeah. And uh, we we were we were uh, we were you know shown ear training and different things. And the ear training part really helped me because that's how I arrange my my harmonies and hmm. different stuff in the studio when I'm doing my, so, you know, I'll be like, oh, this is a third up, you know. So what's you go, ear training mm, if you don't mm, mind? It's no the idea. it's the way that you kind of um, learn the different notes and and like how the spacing, how far away are the notes? It's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That would be an octave. So you learn those notes. Uh, right and you learn how to kind of by ear go what's the fifth uh uh well, you know what is right. it yeah uh, 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 that's the fifth right so uh, 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 
Sounds like a European cop. Right <laughs> <laughs> so it's very boring for you know for yeah. someone who's not you know if you it's like yeah I, I used to sit there and just and just you know not off and be like okay cool I I, I get it but it's a lot of time, explaining right yeah but at the same time some of it sunk sunk in and there's the part of it that you know that I got from it was more like how to really lock into the pitches right each note you know what I mean so that was kind of cool and I at least took that from you still use some of the exercises yeah absolutely you got to warm your voice up especially now at my age now I'm like you know I've I've been singing these songs for 30 years you know but if I don't warm up before my shows and I just think I can wing it it's not yeah and then I and then I go out there and I hear the playback I'm like oh it's not so much like like that anymore I I sound better when I warm up I'm not gonna lie you know it's like you think you got it like that until you don't got it like that yeah (laughs) no it's all right I mean I do I do my best every time but you know I like to warm up before I do and those are the lessons that I learned in, in, in school and stuff like that it's it's best man you know it's it's taking care of the you know the the tool, so to speak. Do you know, you know what I mean? mean? Like, yeah. Um, do you have certain exercises you do before each show, or is it different every time? No, not necessarily with 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 us because it's like we we don't have to sustain notes the way singers do, right. like and hit those different octaves unless we're trying unless we have done that. Then it probably behooves us to do a couple of run throughs and make right. sure we get it warm up the voice, but. Really, it's for me. the The only thing I don't do is, I mean, the only thing I do is try not to drink anything cold, and and I'm good. But I I used to warm up though, like when I was getting control of my voice. I got I you know I was taught certain things by like this uh, opera singer named or well used she was a opera teacher like a wow. singer for uh, a teacher for opera singers right yeah yeah and I was losing my voice at a lot of the shows. And early on because i didn't have control of of my voice or breath control or any of that stuff so be hoarse by the third or fourth show and this went on for a couple years and i whenever i'd hear the playback i'd be like oh that's terrible um doesn't sound like like the record at all you know and i wow. fucking hated that so like i i asked somebody about a vocal coach introduces me to to this this lady elizabeth right and she taught me the breathing part and then the warm-up like she realized i wasn't a singer but to get my my vocal cords warmed up she taught me something similar with those octaves and and uh, i did it for a number of years now i don't i don't really do it i you know i i go in at a good level and i'm not like singing anything to in the beginning let me ask you this. Do you ever have a problem with mem- like the memorizing like your lyrics, like in memorizing certain songs, like if you ever have to do certain like only if songs? I don't know it, know it, right? Like like if they request something that's Oh yeah. You well, know what I mean? And you're just like, "All right, we're going to do this one boom and then it's like If I have some of it in my head, I could probably get through it, but like if I if we've never done it and I never thought to like Sometimes I'll, once we're done with the albums, I like I don't really listen to them so much unless we play whatever we play from it, right? Um, yeah, I would probably have problems with songs we I hadn't performed, but right. like if if we if we've done them at some point, I could reaccess it. You know what I mean? Because I'm doing, I'm just now about to put out a new record and in the spring, and um, and the first single just came out. It's called Waiting on You. It's featuring Tank. Salute. Nice. Congratulations. Hell yeah. We got my man Tank. You know, That's a dope collab. Yeah, he's an amazing artist, amazing writer, and such a talented dude. Like, he came through. He played piano on it as well. He helped me kind of do some sound selection with, like, the snares and the bass and all this. He played bass as well, like, the bass sound. Not only just sang on it. You know, he could have just came through and sang on it. Right. But he wrote a amazing bridge sang the bridge and then laced the all that all the extra production things like i said but um yeah i mean um i brought that up to say i forgot this this weed is good it is good <laughs> you want to dab you brought that up to say you got you just dropped some new hey. shit <laughs> i did i really did but at the same time you know it's it's a trip because uh putting this album together you know it's it's um it's been like 10 years since my last album 
Oh, for real? Yeah, it's been 10 years since my last album. So, you know, wow. at this point, I've just been collecting, you know, the energy that it takes right. to do this, you know, and warming up that energy and getting, you know, like my voice strong, getting my, my head strong to be able to, you know, because I'm independent completely. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not doing any corporate sort of um, I hear sponsorship that. in yeah. terms of not sponsorship, but I'm not signed to a label, as they say. Right. And, um, you know, that that itself takes a lot of uh, warming up. You kind of got to. True that. Kind of got to get it right or get it wrong. You know what I mean? Before, before you can get it right. Um, and that takes just pushing. You know what I'm saying? So especially at my age when you've seen so much success and then you see the other side of the coin in terms of like what it takes, all the innards of what it took to make you so successful in terms of all the tools, like the promotion and the videos and the touring and the, all of it, yeah. all of it, you know what I mean? And then having to do that yourself, that's a different warm up. Oh that's man. A that's a different, that's a, get yourself ready. You that's know what a I mean? different reality right you know? there. So, yeah. yeah, man. But Cause, um, yeah, it's because all that takes like funding. And if, you know, yeah. at that point you're betting on yourself. So yeah, everything we're doing is pushing independent right now, you know, and, and really, that's why I feel like I'm, I'm representing my, myself the best I can in this way because um, it's really us. It's my wife and I, you know, in our, you know, in our, our heads that we have to answer for. Nobody else is, and nobody else is kind of pushing me in the sense of like, oh, go do an album. It's like, no, I really want to do this album. It's just 11 songs on here, but. Yeah, and that's the that's main perfect thing. perfect amount. Yeah. It's the perfect amount, but like to speak to that, it's like, that's the main thing is that you want to do it. You don't yeah, have yeah. to. It's not like you have a label pushing you like, hey, deadline's coming up. You know what I mean? You need to meet the quota and you need to like get this out. Otherwise, we're going to have to start penalizing your album. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That, uh, that was like some fuck shit. Like, you if know, you I'm delay glad that people still fuck with me because, I mean, this is who I'm making the music for. You know yeah. what I mean? It's the people who still, you know, still want to hear these albums and still want to come see my shows and, you know, that are, are stoked to see me doing this interview with you right now, you know, and it's, it's support us, you know what I mean? Because yeah. it's a whole, there's a whole culture of people, there's a whole army of people out there that are diehard R&B hip-hop fans that have been with us. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That knows what this is, too, you know what I mean? And, um, and you gotta so feed them. Cheers, cheers to you, my brother, for having me. Hey, cheers to you, brother, and for you sitting brothers. here with us. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, it's good. It's good you're feeding them new material. I mean, yeah, you man. know, especially after ten years. You know, people often like wondered, man, when they're gonna put out. You, you know, know what I mean? When's he gonna put out something new? And yeah, now you've done that, and you got some pretty damn good features on this. Yeah, uh, this one piece. is cool. This one is cool. Um, we got a Alex Isley. You know, yeah. Speak to speak uh, on her is to say that she is you know some serious R&B lineage being that she's a, a daughter Isley, of yeah. Ernie Isley yeah. the guitar Ooh. player yeah. all those solos all those amazing guitar I mean just guitar wizardry it's a hell um, of a and, musical uh, family right there yeah so his daughter Alex is, is just an amazing voice she's got such a such a soft sultry kind of thicker tone to her voice yeah almost like a Layla Hathaway hmm. Or a um, you know, I, I I really I would compare her to in the same lane as a her, you know, okay. as, as her's voice. Yeah. But she's a little more more jazzy and laid back than her. So yeah. it's 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 like kind of like less is more sometimes with singers. And uh, like Sade had one of those really soothing voices. Yeah. She kind of reminds me of a young Sade in that sense of. Uh, she had like a spa voice. Yeah, she had a spot. You know what I mean, like yeah. it, it was like hits, you know, hits. <laughs> but just, they would relax the hell out of yeah, you. Yeah, absolutely, man. So she came through. She heard this song I have for her, and she didn't want to change anything. She was just with it, and um, and it was a beautiful process to see her just be melodic over the record. And then I had to, uh, I had to do some some reaching back to some, you know, somebody who I keep seeing on the road. Um, and we do shows together, and it was kind of like one of those things where I kept mentioning to him, like, we got we to gotta do something together. And that's Donnell Jones. Right on. Mm. And uh, it was really cool because in 2018, I believe it was, we were doing the Soul Train Awards, and we were backstage, and 
we were both kind of nervous because it's been it's been a minute since we were been on TV or been you know performed on an award show. Right. You know, so we're both kind of just anticipating the moment and. You know, we're talking to each other and just, you know, kind of coaxing each other through the moment. Man, just go ahead and celebrate it. Have a good time, you know? So when you see us perform, there's this very, like, it's just one, it's one of my favorite. Per- Have you ever had one of those performances that you look back and you just say, that's my, that was that's good, him yeah. right there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. So that's how I, I kind of felt about this, this night. And uh, right after uh, we both get finished doing our thing, I was like, man, I got a record for us to do together. And he's like, man, send it to me, man. Send it to me. This is a great night. Um, and so I sent him the record, and man, he got back to me. Man, I want to do it, bro. Let's let's cut it. That's dope. Um, send me the instrumental. So I sent it to him. He cut it. Man, we shot the video. It was a, much like the, like the Tank situation. He just reciprocated in every way, and it was just it was an honor to get with him. So the song is called Understand. That's on there, too. And... Uh, to cap it off, I got with Rick Ross on this album, so that was the boss. boss. The boss, yeah. It was, it was, it was really dope to go to his house and be welcomed by him, yeah. you know, to his his home and all that in Atlanta, and uh, went out there and just, you know, gave him gave him his flowers and uh, it was a mutual respect, man. You know, it's um, it's it's cool when somebody sees the vision be, even before you cut the record, they just they see the vision and he was like. He was with it, so I sent him the track, and he loved it. And he, he sent me back his vocals, and that's what's up. It's man. dope. I got four dope, fe- <coughs> four dope features on this album. Can't be mad at that. Man. Oh, you cannot. Yeah, and those are, those are awesome features. Hell Thank yeah. you, brother. Thank you. Thank Hell you. Oh yeah, you gonna play some? some sh- you gonna play some shows out here pretty soon? Oh yeah, man, absolutely. Um, we just finished doing a couple actually. Uh, this week we did one. At the downtown, right, right, right here in town. Oh shit, I missed it. Oh man, it was, it was, it was like nice little, in, you know, impromptu little, uh, like almost like a warehouse joint. It was, oh yeah, it was oh, nice. chill. It was chill. That's what's oh, up. Yeah. Um, but we are gonna do some listening parties coming up for that the album. Well, you yeah, gotta let me know, know. Man, I would love that, brother. Hell yeah, love that, man. What was it like record? Did you record with Pac for that song? Yes, you I got, did. You did. Yeah, you guys yeah, actually we, laid it down together. Two weeks before he passed, if wow. it wasn't two, it was maybe three, but. Right there. Um, so you were one of the last people to record, really? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we were at Can Am Studios. Can Am. Can Am. I met I met Pac at his video shoot for How Do You Want It. Oh, you was over there with uh, Johnny J. Rest in peace. Oh, uh, Johnny J. He was cool. The producer of Are You Still Down? Yeah. Um, the the beat maker of Are You Still Down? So I met him. I met. Well, I already knew Casey and JoJo. They were there too, but it was. Uh, Sway and Tech uh, was there. Um, we was all on the bus, and Pac came in. He was just like, man, he was cool as ever. I played him some beats, and he was freestyling to some of my beats on the bus. I was just chilling, and uh, so, we hit it off. Everybody was like, oh, you guys better get that in the studio, man. That sounds like it's, you got a hit brewing or something, you know? So I was waiting for him um, to call me up, and my man Bezo. Hit me up. He's like, Pac, why don't you call him? Here's the number, blah, blah, blah. I called him up. He's like, yo, can you meet me at can Tomorrow, I'm like, let's do it. Yeah. So we got we got there. And I thought I was going to make the beat, actually. So I had all my equipment and all that set up and everything. Hmm. But when I got there to set up, Pac was already there. So I looked and I saw this burgundy, uh, I could tell it was his car because it was a burgundy like Rolls Royce or something like Bentley or something like that, really nice. And my CD was sitting in the front seat of the car, like my first album. Mm. Oh, wow. So I was just like, oh, that's, that's dope if that's Pac's car. He was, you know vi- I mean? he was vibing on so you. So he was vibing on me, so I came yeah. in I, and I, I saw Pac there and I was like, um, I'm going to set up, man. You know, he's just, you know, good to see you. And, uh, but before I even got to set up, I said, do you have anything that, you know, is already done that you feel like we could rock over? And the first thing he played me was the beat for Are You Still Down? Dope. Wow. And I said, put that down, bro. Let's, let's get it. And that song was done probably about I think, three or four hours, man. Wow. What year was that, like 94, 95? So that was 96. 96. Yeah. Oh, yeah, right. If it was a few weeks before that. That was 96, that. yep. Yep. Man. When you catch the magic, you know what I'm saying? Just those little crazy moments. 
It was wild, man. It was like the beat just said it all. It, it, it said the beat spoke to me. But the thing that was crazy was I really wanted to collaborate with Pac. So I was asking him questions. Like, right. I was hum some melodies and do some just kind of natural just vibing over the track. But then I said, where, where you think it should go, man? And after hearing how I was going over th- with my melodies, he kind of started going, mm, do, 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 do. and I was like, oh, shit. That's dope. So then I, I said, girl, it's all right, baby. And, you know what I mean? And, and I said, and I sang the, the hook the first time. I was, girl, it's all right, baby. You know what I mean? Whatever. Yeah. And, um, and uh, I started singing it, but it wasn't articulated in the way that you hear it on the record. It was right. like I was just riffing it. Right. And every time Pac would stop me and go, nah, man, it goes, girl, it's all right, baby. And I'd be like, okay. And he sang it to me. Huh. So it wasn't like he he was just like talked yeah. like that. Like, he knew what he wanted to hear. He knew what he yeah. wanted to hear. Yeah. And so what you hear on the record is him producing that in there and saying, now nah, sing it like this, man. And He probably would have eventually evolved into a producer himself. Yeah. Like, because it seemed like he was already sort of there. But, yeah. you know, it was about his music at that point. So, but uh, yeah. He just wanted to create all the time. Yeah. He was he was saying, if you're not making three songs a day, then you ain't really doing it, man. You know, blah, blah, blah. God damn. You know, yeah. Like, yeah, I'm like, that three songs like a day? Like Kobe shit. That, right that's there. crazy. Yeah, it was wild. Like I he, could relate to it in on some levels because there was a stretch I was working like that, and it's a pace to keep up. Wow. And not everything is going to be good, though. Right. You, you're working to get three songs done, but it doesn't make, mean that three songs are going to be dope all the time exactly right right so it's a lot of that's a lot of pressure to put on yourself but i mean he i mean he had a vault of music it's still probably unreleased shit yeah sitting there i will say pre-kids pre me having kids children on my own like i was probably making three beats a day yeah you know what i mean because that's all i was thinking about was making music and and those kind of but other things kind of take over in your life, and I feel like it's now it's about not so much about how much, but how, how like not about the, the quantity of beats, but it's about the quality of the quality. beat. Quality, you know yes. what I mean? Yeah, one hundred. Putting like my personal life. But <laughs> uh, right, <laughs> it folks, sounds good. He's here all week. Well, that's good too, though. Bro. Oh, yeah, that is quality, quality, quality beat, baby. Man. You know, quality's quality, man. Yeah. Hey, man, you want a dad, bro? Quality sure, of why not? I got you loaded up. Yeah, it. Baby. <laughs> it almost sounds like you cracked up right there, Chief. Yeah. You all right? That's just the chest. <laughs> Damn you, Brittany, from first smoke of the day. She gave me a glowing dab on Friday. She was the chest. Bro, so what clouds, is, man. <laughs> It'll vibrate and you just breathe. That's a puff oh, that's cold peak, don't man. Even, don't even you don't have one of those? This is you need so to dope. get one, man. It's this ready to like go. The, this is like some Star Wars. It's ready. Job of the Hut. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Where you have that? There you go, perfect. Excellent. Oh yeah. And it won't burn it, it's just good <laughs> flavor. Oh, it's all flavor right yep. there. Oh yeah. Clouds. Smoke. There yeah. You go. Yes. Ooh. Yeah. Lemon OG. Right the there. flavor right that there. Is so flavor. Nice. Lemon OG. You got flavor G yeah. right there. More candy in that one I gave you. I love, oh my God. You love. <laughs> I love lemon OG. Anything yep. OG is yeah. my. Atta that's boy. my strain. Oh, it's always been my strain. I yep. always love OG. Yeah. Southern, OG. Southern Cali's Finest. You know, uh, staple. Yep. Yeah, we love our but OG. I can smell it like even like I'll be like in Miami or something like that and somebody will have some yeah. fire and I can tell whether it's OG or not. Because they usually have Haze or OG down there. Yeah. Man, I mean, it's just like you New know. York. We had Sour. That was our OG. You know, that yeah. was our staple. Which Man, was good. Great. It was sour good. Diesel was love. good to me. Yeah, it was good. The Haze yeah, was good too. You know, I love the Haze. In, uh, in and then another one was, was it G13? Yeah. Back G13, there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was a sativa, yeah. though, yeah. Yeah. I never really tripped on haze. It was never my thing. Yeah, it was, I, I liked it. Miami haze. I liked lemon well, haze. The yeah. thing about haze. what haze made so good in New York is we had boof weed for so long. Then the Miami haze came up in, like, mm-hmm. mid-'90s. So it was still ugly, but the taste and flavor, that distinct it, we thought it was sprayed for a while. I'm not even joking. Yeah, no. It always looked different, but always smelled the same. We're like, eh, we don't know. Learn, and we later we learned different phenols will look different. Right, but right. It always had that smell. But we're like, yo, are they spraying it? It just don't look the same, but it smells the same. But it got you faded, and it was like, yeah. you go uptown for that. That was it. You know, St. Mark's like, 
Those uh, were the spots back in the day. Miami Hayes. I remember there was this East Coast. It was in New York in the 90s. It was called We Deliver. Yeah. yeah. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah, Hell yeah. Little, we deliver. It was literally. It was yeah. yeah the rectangular, yeah. rectangular plastic, plastic yep. guys yeah. with yeah. The, you go pop. That was this hey, right. Open. That shit was key. It man. was. It that was, was when key, the good bro. weed arrived. Yes. By the way, that oh, was already when the saved good weed us a number of times. Yep. Okay. Yes. Oh yeah. In the Man. studio right there. Yeah. Just the original up. delivery. Man, I'm gonna be roll up on a bicycle. Yeah. Man, and you guys had the pieces and all that in like the little shops the head I, shops yeah the head shops you had them all over so you can yep. always get yourself a nice little yeah always had the glass a little yeah. i would have a nice little zob yeah little mini zob little guy with the you know so the water <laughs> wouldn't splash in your face yeah yeah, oh, yeah. Have rick shout out right on, on on the spot i was more of a smoker always mm. than yes. a drinker or anything else yeah, same. it's always been you know on flowers of you know, in hash and what yeah, well. everything done you well, my friend. It's done you well. Shit. <laughs> Thank you. Likewise, my brother. Right Likewise, on, man. Yes. We we stay strong. Yes, yes, sir. What were you gonna say, Blaze? <clears throat> uh, yeah. you're talking about bike services. One of the original, like big bike services, rest in peace, Ricky Powell. Ricky like, Powell. Ricky yeah. Powell, yeah. Was one of the first dudes because he took those connections traveling with, you know, run DMC in the in the early days going out to Cali. He made those connects. He was one of the first dudes bringing back fly like full buds you started seeing full weed right around that time like i'd say early 90s 92 93 and that was wow early because everything was still bricked up until like mid 90s to late 90s so it was Ricky so, Powell it was blew so that beautiful the bud sure was in the little plastic square containers you know yeah. Oh, yeah. pop and it, you were there was an eighth it was never an eighth it was like two grams tops it was like 80 to 100 dollars for that back then yeah, oh, yeah. And people yeah. bought it like that yeah, we did because it was fire and yeah, all we, we seen was brick before that so if you even had the ability to get it, you're like how many you got you just bought them like that was it yeah gold thank you swooped them up yeah but it was so illegal in New York oh, yeah. City. Yeah. I see it. So, you know what I mean? You don't go Smoking walking around. Like, I, I I used to think it was cool to, to go to the park and blaze until, like, a <laughs> literally a cop <laughs> rolled up on me in the, in the park because he smelled it. He was just like, hey, you, come over here. I'm like, oh, shit. You know, yeah. but, uh, yeah, no. Nah. used to rain down on weed heads yep. over there. Yeah, yeah. They, it was really highly illegal. Even a roach. They caught you with a roach, right? Did yeah. You? Yeah, you know yeah. how ironic though, because yep. a lot of those cops be smoking weed now. Hell yeah, yeah, good for them. It's Love so great. Them. It's so great now. I I go to New York now and I stay in Soho and I'm. It's all like a weed town. Yep, sure it's is. like the red light district of <laughs> like New York. It's totally opposite of Amsterdam <laughs> yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. We were talking about earlier. You know, it's it's a trip because um, their laws. You can smoke anywhere. You can smoke cigarettes. You can, you can smoke weed. You can smoke That's weed the, in the street. Wherever you, can you know, smoke we're out there. Yeah. Smoke weed. That's awesome. So oh, yeah, I I, 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 at first I saw a cop walk right by me, and I, because I was burning, and I thought about, it, I was like, oh yeah, I don't have anything to worry about. And this yeah. is a trip, like, so yeah, that, that is cool that it's come up, you know, come to that now. Yeah, man. Evolved to that. Oh, yeah. I I remember it was really like all about knowing a friend that had a rooftop, so you yeah. could just smoke freely yeah. on the rooftop. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because in New York, like, you couldn't, you had to know like an alley where you weren't gonna get fucked with. You had yes. to go like some weird little kind of parking lot behind yeah. somewhere or whatever, <laughs> you know, or just like yeah. some little side street or whatever. You would just hopefully not get, you know, messed with by the cops. So I hated it. So you had to be much. low key somewhere. Low oh, key but I will somewhere. Tell you where it's still hot though. London, England, boy. Or this, yeah, they, Ooh, no, they still hate it. Ah. I was smoking weed one time in the in the, this little like one of those spots you were talking about, like just a little alley. What a, what I thought was an alley, but I guess it was the uh, the back door of a bank. Like the front of it was the bank. Okay. So I was in a place where there was <laughs> cameras, obviously, or something. But anyways, I I was finished my I finished my little smoke. And I walked to the um, to the hotel. It was right next door. So I walk in the hotel, and the elevator door. I'm closing the elevator door, and one of those batons. That's all they goes, got. <laughs> and like, it's like a, it's like a, like one of those Sergeant Pepper Lonely Hearts Club band guys, like, <laughs> with, the, with the helmet. He, he's like, "Were you smoking marijuana?" And I was just like. Uh, what are you talking about, sir? I'm in a hotel. Like, I'm just going upstairs. I just played it off so well. But I was hoping that he didn't smell it on me, you know? Right. But he's like, hmm, oh, okay. And he walked off. You know, there's nothing he well, can really say. Well, how to crump it. 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh man, Fucked but off, it is so it is so illegal out there still. So I don't, I don't, you know, I don't do that anymore when I when I go out there. I don't like look for it or anything like that. I'm just yeah, yeah. Usually I'm just um. You gotta get a room with a balcony. I, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? To be exactly. on the balcony, man. Yeah, you gotta find somebody with a balcony. Yeah, one hundred. <laughs> yeah, straight up, man. Get that that uh that room. With they gotta the change room. the laws over there. There's a lot of cannabis um advocates and activists out there, man. They need yeah. to quit. Poor first. Shirley, she just got busted in Germany, and then what? A week? They're gonna be legal. They're gonna be legal. In she a just week. yeah. She they just wanted like to get the week. last yeah. of the yeah. tourist yeah. money. Oh, We're gonna get the last of the tourists, right? Money. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's crazy. That's a trip. <laughs> oh man! I was uh, I was um, uh, I caught one time coming in from Amsterdam, and that was the one time I got um, you know, arrested or whatever, and then uh, they, you know, they were. I was actually um. Red tagged my passport for ten years. Actually, I didn't yeah. stay anyway. there too even longer. Just so you know, I got. From Mexico to Texas, I was bringing some shitty weed back in a bong. Dumbest <laughs> thing ever. It was dirt weed. But I was like, I'm, I'm just going to put it inside. You know, like they made those handcrafted wood bongs out in Mexico. So I took the top off and stuff, whatever weed was left, put it in my bag. I got caught for that crappy ass weed. And yeah, a red flag of a 10. But then I found out from uh, TSA that stays there. Like you're, you, you're supposed to be automatically searched for 10 years. Yeah. But they can see that you got popped forever oh i know oh, yeah. I, uh, I know that because get, um yeah. when i go to canada yeah they don't stop me anymore but they used to literally get me for every single time yeah. they get me so yeah. for some more money for some more money more money and they keep you there for an hour and talk to you and whatever Question. and then then let you in no um yeah that was that was crazy because i just had a joint on me and it was just by accident that it was a, a fully rolled joint. You know, when you're in Amsterdam, yeah. you're rolling joints and you're forgetting about what's in your pocket because you're just rolling from cafe to cafe. And oh, yeah. man, I had a I had a fully rolled like nice joint with like hash in it and everything. Ah. And, and they got that shit. He, she was like, "What am I supposed to do with this?" I was like, "Give it back." I don't know. Just <laughs> put it. Just pretend like you didn't see it. <laughs> exactly. like, what do you mean? <laughs> so then they wanted to do the whole search and do that thing and then. Yeah, but they, they 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 they'll take you you know they'll take you away for anything. Yeah, I mean uh, they they had Eric Bobo the same way for Aww. a few years. Yep. Where time we go to Canada, they're going through his shit. Like he he got to spend that hour of the questions and them you know going through his uh, his bag. Yeah, they'll oh. go through your phone. Like I've seen that on what's it called? There's a show like uh, go through your phone, bro. Like Border Patrol or something. Like if they and this is in America, so like let's say people come in. Depends and, on the drugs you're smuggling. Oh no, but they have the right. Is what I'm <laughs> telling you. They actually have the right to go through your I, phone. I know that, but it 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 all depends on the drugs they. No, think you're smuggling. they didn't. Oh no, I was gonna say they hadn't found them yet. This is just interview. So when wow. you come into the country, they're still allowed to screen you when you get there. Bro, they literally pop people's phone. They, they find pictures of people with weed and guns and like back out. They literally put them on the plane, send them right back. Aww. I'm like, wow. That's man. the thing. When I go to other countries and stuff like that, I don't mess around, man. No. I don't, it's not worth it. I'm, I had um, this story that my, my wife had a friend that she went to school with. And she got caught with, um, well, she was bringing some X with her. She yeah. had some, some, some MDNA with her coming to Germany. Mm. And she had just had a baby. So her baby was at home and uh, probably like, you know, I don't know, a couple months old or whatever. She ends up getting eight years for that shit wow. in Germany. Damn. Not being able to see her kid till she wow. was eight years old. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just for some Whoa. ex. Mm. So it's really like that type of shit is just scary when you go, you go to other countries, you have no idea what their stipulations are, you know? And uh, I mean, wow. they'll. You cannot they, be fucking they, around taking a chance. If they want to make an example out of you, they will. They'll take you, like in, in take you down. You know, like in Middle Eastern countries, you don't want to yeah. be fucking around. Yeah, Singapore <laughs> used to be like that when we were younger. Remember people Singapore, I've been there. Yeah, people Far used East. People caned for that stuff. Oh, it says Far, it. Far in Middle it. East. But it yeah. says it on the on the on yes. the, on yeah. the thing that you punishable have to by up. death. Yes, yeah. says, we don't go by. those places. Yeah. We don't. Yo, I've been there yeah. once. <laughs> I mean, we're talking about places last, that turned you around. Can't chew gum there. Like, yeah. 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 yeah, I mean, a place you you can't chew gum in is yep. a place you should not be in. Right. Thailand yeah. actually used to be extremely. There's no so. litter. There's no litter anywhere. Yeah. It's like trap. When you see, 
in you Singapore. Trash can? Yeah. Yeah. There's well, no, the, it's the caning. The, streets. the caning was from that kid doing graffiti in the 90s. Oh, yeah. They from, caned his ass. Yeah, it was bro. American. Oh, yeah. And they would try, like, he they would try. Back, hey, he came yep. back. Oh, <laughs> boy. He came back lit <laughs> up. Yeah, that was that was funny because that made like, I mean, international he, hey, listen, headlines. Everybody made a big deal about that shit, but he deserved that. You yeah. don't go into a foreign <laughs> country <laughs> and, and, and do that shit and, and then get caught and expect yeah. no repercussions from. That. Well, that's, that's why our country didn't step in. They're they were like, because they wanted, they wanted to try to get him. Like, they were trying to get him immunity. Like, no, he's gonna you know, take like, nope. the cane. There it is. Look, there he is. Hey, listen, Kane's here. <laughs> Abel, Abel stood home, but yep. Kane is here. Yep. He whooped his ass. And he whooped his ass. He came back <laughs> fragile, boy. Damn. <laughs> yeah. he was broken by it. Yeah. Wow. They what must have whooped his one? ass with that cane, though. Like. The whip and aim. Plan. They're gonna make an example of this American. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna let you guys know. Don't come over here fucking up our shit. <laughs> you know, <laughs> all we do is throw them in jail or something, oh. slapping the hands. But they be whooping some ass. They cane you. Literally, like make an example out of this motherfucker. Like you will not come here and do that again. And for anybody <laughs> thinking they're gonna come here and do that, Ooh. this is what we do to y'all. Oh, you're going to take these wilts. You're going to catch the cane. <laughs> catch the cane. <laughs> yeah, bro. Flop, you only got six of them. The so. of six lashings. Yeah. yeah. That's a lot, bro. Those you things are serious. What, yeah, but they You want to show away. what a flogging looks like? Hey, man. do yeah. you think they got a name for the cane? I, I don't know. <laughs> Big Daddy? <laughs> How about you think they got a name for the cane? Let's hope. It's, it's Co. <laughs> Cocaine. Or candy. <laughs> they hit you, with, hit you with the cocaine. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's hurt. See what I did? There you go. See what you did. Ramping up. <laughs> Ramping up. Oh, yeah, don't go fucking up in other um, no. countries. No, no. no. And Thailand used to be real bad. I went in 06, and back then, like, like we paid, like, I think it was like two, three hundred dollars for two Thai cigarettes that were on, like, they took the tobacco out. And then mixed like weed and tobacco and hash together. Yeah. A couple hundred dollars for three of them. I didn't even taste weed. I think we right. the cab driver was like, if you get caught in that, 20 years. 20 just, years, yeah. Just for those no, couple cigarettes. I don't want it. Like guaranteed, we were petrified. After we smoked like the first and didn't taste weed, we like, just throw that out. Same shit is like in Dubai. You know what happened to me? I was in England and um, I, I, I got a joint from somebody that had, you know, I, I, I thought it was weed. And, uh, he had it pre-rolled for me. I got into the car right after the airport. And he's got this nice big cone joint ready for me. So I light it up and I take a big old hit from it. Like, cause I'm thinking this is, this is probably some bomb, right? And it was half tobacco. To oh yeah. yeah that's the half worst. weed. Oh, because yeah. they like spliffs. Spliff. They like spliffs. Yep. Like Isn't it? Mix. Oh yeah. The tobacco. Hash or weed. First of it is. Right is tobacco and then half of it like very little of it is probably weed yeah or they just blend it all together like mm. they just want they just want to tingle yeah or stretch it out bro they, Ruins pay, a it, right? they pay a lot but listen yeah i fainted i was Not like i literally took you know when you have oh you got the you got like, the spin headed you know when you get like it's just like you just literally yeah. you lose track of everything for like five seconds or yeah. whatever and you black out. it's like a blackout yeah that's what happened to me yeah, so like, I, I mean, and I've smoked cigarettes before, or whatever, in the past. So, but I just wasn't expecting it. I wasn't expecting. Yeah, when well, you don't, you were holding it in too. I was so, drawing yeah. it like a, a. I was taking the like a joint, yeah. like a joint. It's you know different. I mean? So I was taking it straight into my lungs. Yep. And then I hit that tobacco, and that shit was just like. <laughs> they were like John, John. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. The, I, it pro same thing would probably happen to me, man, because I cannot stand tobacco like i don't smoke it yeah I, I had a couple bad experiences off of it when i tried it when i was a kid yeah and i would totally get the spin out you know what yeah, i mean I so like i don't it. like that feeling I so that. yeah that that was probably one of the things that saved me from smoking was that tobacco nasty was, feeling was that crazy ass feeling yeah. i didn't like it i knew a lot of people like at the end of a blunt they didn't even smoke cigarettes they'd want to hit it just to get a high like, let me get a hit of that right at the end of the blunt because it would give them, like, you're not getting high. You're not getting high. You're getting the fucking head Correct, headband. yeah. Um, you're going to UK in July, huh? Yeah, I'm going to the UK. Going to go smash Hell it yeah. out down there. Absolutely. Hell yeah. How long you? How long's the trip? How long? How many shows um, are you doing? It's going to be uh, two two nights at the Jazz Cafe, mm. and uh, that's in London. Dope. And that's always, like, a very kind of nostalgic spot for me because um, 
not only the people that are my favorite people have had like incredible experiences there, like D'Angelo and Erica Badu and stuff like that. Like they've had like big songs that they've recorded there that have been live versions right. of their songs. So it's kind of like a real proper jazz club, if you will. You know, the energy in that building yeah. is really, really special. And however they redo the room, it gets a little bit redone over the, the time. The, the essence of the building is still the same. You know, it's the same, same yeah. stage. You've got this little overhanging uh, balcony area for them to have dinner and drinks or whatever. But you have your basically standing crowd with the bar right there. And it's probably about 450 people. Cool. It's intimate, not. Yeah. It's very intimate. Yep. So that experience for me has always been really, really, like the most potent out of all the gigs you can do because they can literally feel you sweat. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, it's right there. Yeah. Turn like he, you know. So it's just a matter of uh, of of having that intensity and that that real that love for what we do. We don't always get to see each other. Right. Um, so when we go over there, it's like a celebration of like how, I, you know, I don't know when the next time I'm coming back because you know it's it's probably years, you know, or or maybe not, maybe it'll be soon, but you never know. So you treat it like it's gonna be your last, if not, you know what I mean. You're just True like, that. damn, this is I don't know when I'm gonna come back. So I'm gonna give them a show to remember, and at the same time, they're kind of giving you that same energy because they don't always get to see you. you know? That's right. Are you gonna film and record that show? Man, do you feel like you I want should. to? I should. I should. I mean, like you it, asking that question really, it 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 poses a question because I have a camera guy that I've been doing everything with, who's here today actually, yeah. um, my man Callie, and uh, he's been going everywhere with us. You know, we went to New York, we've been all over the United States, but it's been really cool to film this process of just getting in touch with the fans, uh, doing all the different little. Things I've been able to do to promote the record and right. radio, all you know, we've been filming videos. So there's a lot of different things we've done, but traveling internationally is the only thing we haven't done yet. So mm. that's, that's actually that, that's, a really cool thing to think about doing. It'll that's be, the next piece right yeah, there. Yeah, that'd be dope. That would be dope. Hell yeah. I know you're looking forward to it. It's going to be dope. Yeah, we're going to go to Manchester, Birmingham, do some shows out there as well. In there. Um, and some small little venues as well out there. And uh, yeah, that's gonna be a dope experience, man. Yeah, yeah, man. I'm I'm excited that they still want to see me. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's, it's been a long time coming. So, you know, we 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 usually get a a good England gig. You know, one if it's not you know all around England, it's uh it's usually London. We usually do one, yeah. one gig a year out in London. You know? Got to do it. Yeah, man. I love it. I yeah. love it. Yeah, it's so Keep dope. the bass strong. Oh man, they're so. They're so into R and B and just music in general, such a music loving, you know, community out there. Um, and really go out still to the clubs and still enjoy the nightlife still. It's amazing in London. So it's some something to really kinda experience and, and enjoy and know it's there, you know. Um, you know, it's a different it's a different New York. Yeah, it's a different it's, vibe. But it's know, a it's, good one. It's like New York is a big city, you know, it's um, you know, something to experience just like if you're from any anywhere else you come to la la is a big city you know what i mean well, la is actually a big city new york's tiny it just has a shit ton of people it's got all those buildings yeah. that make it look so yeah. big right but yeah. it's only like what four, it's 14 miles exactly something. they build up so it looks they build up right yeah. right right yeah man. we are we are a big city <laughs> yeah we are yeah, yeah we sure. are. you got to drive. Somebody can be like, oh, I live in L.A. Where in L.A.? <laughs> yeah, because L.A. is a oh, big yeah. place. Boy. <laughs> Don't sound far. That's an hour drive. Yeah, you know, yeah that, that's the thing in New York. You yeah. could jump on a train or, yeah, or a cab or an Uber or whatever. Beat the traffic. Yeah. Yep. Or, or, you know, you could walk, <laughs> yep. depending on how yep. far the, 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 the walk is, right? Out here, hell no. Drive, <laughs> you better man. have a ride, son. I think what I mean by big city, though, is... is I know what you meant. The nightlife yeah. of downtown, and you know, if you go downtown yeah. LA and you're the heart of downtown LA at nighttime, yeah, or any sort of part of city part of New York market is, I mean, top. Absolutely. You, you know, know what, what I mean? And you go down there and you experience that energy with all the people and just Nothing the people like enjoying the architecture, enjoying the the lights, enjoying oh, the the traffic jams, whatever it is, is all part of our just our vibration that we're getting in it. Yeah. I love it's I love traveling for that reason and experiencing all the different 
places, you know what I mean? They all have yeah. something dope to offer, you know? Hell yeah. Hell yeah, yeah I love going to my own backyard, man, and just walking down the street, you know? It's 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 always a something to be appreciated. You That's know? right. Mm-hmm. Catching a vibe. Yeah, catching a vibe, man. Yeah. That's right. All right, before we go any further, uh, let's check this out. Hey guys, it's Kelvin from Dr. Greek down West L.A. We're here located at 12235 Bullshit Boulevard, just about 15 minutes away from Santa Monica Pier. Uh, we do have some daily deals going on always. We also have 20% off for your first time. So if you guys are in the area, come check it out. Come, see, come say hi to us, all right? Back to you guys at the studio. Word up. Check out the Dr. Green Thumb locations in Los Angeles. Now let's get into submissions. That's where they torture us, John. Submissions. <laughs> submissions. 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 All right. First, I got to let everybody know, put hashtag Be Real TV in your super chat to win a uh, free pair of tickets to the all-time high tour. That's going to be May 4th. Must be 18 plus, valid photo ID, and claim tickets in person. We will announce the winners on Friday. All right, you guys are going to like this first one. We got Reiki up in here, so I made some veggie pasta. Saying long story short, Ooh, okay. it was fire. Fire. That looks amazing. All it's right. Like some pesto or something. Amazing. Here's the amazing. seasoning to use. Okay. Amazing. Ooh. Excellent. Whoa. That's some kind of like veggie. Don't tell me what it is, Chris. <laughs> 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 Fucking jerk. <All> right. <laughs> Such a dick. And now you've made God me hungry. Damn. Now it looks great. Okay, now it's put together. Bring it. That looks amazing. Mm-hmm. It's oh, really shit. quite amazing, mate. Yeah, big shout to Reiki. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All of it. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> I'll take that. Bring Especially it. in this state right now, God damn. Oh man, I'm I'm hungry. See, that's that's the first part of the torture right there, John. Yeah, this, dude. This is torture part, you know what I mean? They, they're going to show us a bunch of food right is now. Is it infused as well? No. no this, yeah, they'll tell you if it is. That's yeah. just regular food. Yeah. The, most of the time, it's regular yep. food that they're just killing us with because they know after all this smoke, motherfuckers got to be hungry. <laughs> <laughs> and we are. Yeah, Thank you yeah. very much. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We got a, let's see here, Mike here with some steak and a baked potato. <laughs> oh, see? Nice. This is for no reason, baked. John. Baked potato looks amazing right now. Yeah, it does. Mm. Damn it. Damn. You mm. going to get us some steak afterwards or what, B? <laughs> Damn. Got chunks of garbage. We're going to ride tonight. L.A. Rider Speed. Yeah, we're going to ride tonight. I ran ride it off, yeah. Yeah, we're going to ride it. Yeah, if I had a steak, I'd be it riding off. it off. But I'm not going to have a steak tonight. Sorry. <laughs> Heavy, heavy, heavy. We got a Jux up in here saying, pulled up to McDonald's and the dude had the McBlicky on oh him. Oh, my God. <laughs> Yo, he ain't playing. <laughs> got the McBlicky. <laughs> the McBlicky. Oh, wow. <laughs> right. that, what is it? Damn, is that a piece? Is that it's a, a Glock, yeah, man. That, yeah. Looks like a Glock. It's the McBlicky, son. <laughs> you want a McBlicky sandwich? Oh. No. You ain't robbing that McDonald's. Nah, you ain't robbing that Mickey <laughs> D's, bro. <laughs> Dead ass. He's probably the owner operator. Glicky D's right there, son. Glicky D. Glicky D. <laughs> you going to Glock Donald, son? Oh. Glock Donald. There you go. <laughs> we got a, let's see here. We got Mike again saying early bird gets the worm. Got some nice hearty Ooh. omelet with some toast. Damn. Okay. Jelly. All right, breakfast. Jelly Extra up. jelly. Yeah, that's Extra jelly. You guys open like. <laughs> Too much jelly. Yeah, it is kind of too, <laughs> much, too much. I like bro. a little more butter with it. <laughs> like there that. there's probably no, is butter, butter, but there's so much <laughs> jelly <laughs> in it you can't see. Um, That's what I'm saying. Uh, are you guys the type of guys that would have breakfast for dinner? Yes. Yes. I love it. Yeah, me too. I, I love it. it. Once in a while, yeah, not all exactly. the time. Exactly. It might be tonight. Even with pancakes. Oh, Ooh. part of breakfast for That's dinner, dessert. Bro. Yeah, yeah for French sure. toast. French even. toast, I was going to say. Yeah, French, French toast. toast. That's a good one. You have to make French, French toast. toast for like creme brulee, not creme brulee, but brulee style. You burn the sugar to make it crunchy. I've oh, had wow. it. I've never done it. I do it every once in a while. Dope. It's good. You wow. just put a little extra Creme brulee sugar. style. Yeah, you just burn the I sugar. I can make French toast, crunchy. but not that fancy shit yeah. right there. You know what I'm saying? And Bolton's going to say, when are you going to make us French get, toast? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Never. I had the most fire French <laughs> toast I've ever had in my life yesterday at Castaways up here at Glendale. Okay. No way. Yo, Castaways. 
Nah, Yo, check it's it called out. Castaways Restaurant. Do you know what kind yeah. of bread they put it on? Man, That's this was like an apple pie inside. The, oh, what? Like inside of the, the French toast. It was cinnamon, but then it had the flaky outside. Was there apples or no? You, were you just know how, you know how a crumb donut will have like the flakes on a crumb donut? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It had those on the outside. Okay. Castaways. Okay, it was, it was take it fire. Up, yeah. We got to hey, go. Hey, field trip. Yeah. Yep. Let's go oh, field trip. Oh, I got a field trip for us, buddy. It's, and it's close downtown, but it's got to be on a Sunday. You right guys look like it. It's, it's cool. All right. Uh, it's not the greatest picture, but is this what you're talking about? Castaways? Yes. Ooh, there you That's go. It. There's this crumb. That is Whoa. Oh my. Whoa. Ooh. That shit is loaded. Yeah. That, that looks is, good. That I would try that. Awesome. That's probably bananas. like a brioche or something. By, I don't know why. I'm just, All these real thick. on the outside, bro. That is mm -hmm. And it's moist on the inside. Yeah, yeah, see, baby. that's the business. You, <laughs> that's the business right there. Try that. Mm -hmm. Castaways. All right. We got a young stew made some shrimp Alfredo with angel hair <laughs> pasta and garlic bread. This is fucking torture, you motherfuckers. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> Thank I'll you. accept this too, even though I can't have it. Nope. God, right it there. Good. Bring it. Mm. I made a feast yesterday. Are you so. are you vegan? No. Okay. God, but I'm no. saying, you know, to see all the pictures of these great food <laughs> that we don't got in, right, front, in, of in us. front of us. Man. Horrible. Vegan. I punch my food before. I eat it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kidding. Like ease on bread. And then his bread, yeah. <laughs> 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 Yo, big shout to a uh, B Real TV member, Ryan Benson. He ordered the new Green Thumb poster and B Real TV sticker from hey, the site. Hey, yeah. thank you so much. He's saying everything yeah. came fast, was packaged well, and looks awesome in the house. Thank you very much, man. Oh, yeah. Those are available at www.bereal.tv. I, oh. um, in case y'all are inquiring, they're for real. Whoa, went over a little hey, bit. Whoa. There. whoa, whoa, whoa. What'd you do? Take it easy up there, bro. That's the new joint. Go check it out. There's T-shirts and and the rest made with this uh, design too. So mm -hmm. take advantage. Awesome. All right. All right. Big shout out to Karina. She's saying Little B's latest adventures. Apparently, most trade shows in Indianapolis bring indie cars, regardless of what the show is. Look at that. Yes. How's it going, Little B? Yeah, little thumb. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Imagine driving that thing around, man. I would love it. Oh yes, please. No, I would be dangerous. I would give it a shot, but it would be trip. You know, just looking at it. Don't get mad. Who knows what the drive is like, but looking at it, it's kind of trippy. Indy cars used to go faster than F1. Yeah, they, yeah like top speed. Look at that. But F1's performance. Like, imagine how fast you're going in that little last Over frame right there. Yeah. In that little frame. It's like a go-kart. Yeah. Yep, it is, basically. Yeah. yeah. It's like a card on steroids. I mean, there's more engine than anything for sure they weigh almost it's almost all motor it's all yeah. carbon fiber if you fuck up in that yeah. thing oh, oh. Done. done deal yes so damn that thing goes 200 over yeah over yeah, oh, yeah over man. look at, at that, that wing in the front yeah. though oh, oh. <sighs> Yeah, yeah, man. You eat shit, you're eating shit. You yep. eating shit, you eating shit. <laughs> you be better be. That, that ain't good. no bumper. No. Uh, that's that's no bump. gonna, that's nah. not going to stop shit. That's all for speed. Yeah. Ooh. That's to keep the car from that's flipping over and to, you know, set keep it low and centered. Yeah, the air. Yeah. Uh, Damn. Dynamic. So. But hell no. Nah. Yeah. I wouldn't drive <laughs> that at top speed. No, crazy. thank you, sir. What do you think of the uh, trike? Hell yeah. All right. <laughs> We're getting you that for your birthday, Bolton. That'd be cool. <laughs> right on. Take it down some would. steep hills. That like, yeah. kind of like a big wheel, right? Out there in Strong yeah, Beach. It's half big wheel. It's a... Right? Yeah, right. <laughs> yep. Back half big wheel, front wheel. It's like half, wheel right? That's like, like, that's like a bike mullet right there. <laughs> a bike mullet. You know what I'm saying? If, if party in the front or whatever. Party in the front. <laughs> whatever. Business in the back. Business in the front. <laughs> party in the Business back. in the front. Party in the back. <laughs> Relax in the back. That's, that should that's what that bike should be called the mullet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And Karina's asking uh um she's saying side note, Franco says I should call him the doctor instead of little B. Yeah. What does B real think? Yeah, the doctor's fine. I mean it's cool. Either one is really fine, but the doctor sounds cool. That's sounds cool. Excellent. Here we go. The doctor. He's moving around in life. You know what I'm saying? He Look at him. He, the doctor don't stand still. Mm -mm. Never in one place. True that. All right. Next in here, we got Chev. He's asking, who's rocking the best 80s mustache? 
Mm. I'm going to uh, say, um, damn, that's a hard choice right there. I'd be but I'm going to have to say, old oh boy, from, uh, you know, Hall and Oates. Hall and Oates. Yeah, definitely. That's the, the most mean. <laughs> Ross dude's father. Yeah. Know, <laughs> Tom Selleck or Burt, dude, Tom Selleck. I mean, Tom listen. Selleck had more chest hair. No, T- Tom Selleck. <laughs> he was no, I'll, I'll say this. Tom Selleck, Burt, had, they had yeah. some great stashes, and so did. Well, I know Richie didn't have such a great stash. It was okay. Uh, nah, that was uh, many. Uh, uh, Fred, Freddie, yeah. he had a decent stash, but Man, I mean, look at that. Look at the well kept stash on dude. Bird. Gotta give it to Mr. Oates. I like your style. I'm gonna man. give it to Bert. You're giving it to Bert? Yeah. Okay. How about when um, in, Cheech, in the Cheech and Chong movie, he was trying to front like it was Burt Reynolds? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because of the mustache. Right, right, you yeah. pulled up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was uh, Burt Reynolds. <laughs> Those movies are so good. They all thought he was Burt Reynolds. Yeah. Yeah. In Amsterdam. Yep. He was in Amsterdam. He pulled up. <laughs> the press. Yeah. That was great. That was some funny shit. Oh, that's true. <laughs> We got our boy Lucas just showing off a little bit of artwork, saying it's still a work in progress. That's pretty dope, my oh, friend. Looks cool. That looks That's cool. Dope. Wow. Let us see oh, it when you're done. Awesome. We got uh, John up in here saying, shout out to the Dr. Green Thumb show all the way from uh, New Mexico. I just wanted to show you guys the three gram RSO syringe Ooh. we give to medical oh, patients yes. that need it. Damn. And they can get it for only a penny out here. That's oh, great. Wow. Oh, that's so good. He's yeah. saying our company, Lava Leaf Organics, gives them to patients that need it medically for any type of illness. That's awesome, man. That's rad. That's, that's great. Dope. Give them a round for that. Yeah. And that penny is they have to charge. They don't want to. Like, yeah. have to. Yeah. So yeah. that's like the minimum. We do it in dispensaries. Yeah. We do a giveaway. So that company is basically donating. That's dope. Yeah, salute to that company. Big what are they called again? It is, uh, let's Lava see here, Leaf. Lava Leaf Organics. Salute to Lava Leaf. Yep. Shout out to Lava Leaf doing the, the good work out there. That's right. We also got, a, let's see, we got um, Red Iserman saying, yo, I've been eating a gram per day for breakfast going on two years now. You boys need to step up your RSO <laughs> game. Oh, I my believe God. Them. Listen, he if you've been that. doing it for that long, a gram ain't yeah, nothing. Yeah, a gram ain't to nothing two. to you by now for a year, yeah, he You said? should be up to two. Damn. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah. I'm, I got to get back up to that. I was doing that, but yeah. like I got to get back. <laughs> I just wonder if that. he's doing one gram in the morning or breaking up because I oh, break it up. He said that like gram after breakfast. Yeah. Or okay. There you go. Or a gram like for breakfast. After yeah. gram. Is that what he said? Yeah, what he's he... saying eating a gram per day for breakfast. There you go. Ooh, yeah, that's gee. heavy. At Jeez. the start of the day. Yeah. I Woo! do mine and start, but it's like four hundred. It's less than that. It's a lot. But you know, you burn that off. So how keep... many milligrams is that? That's a uh, thousand. Well, well, the milligrams are different. Remember, like weights. They're that doesn't mean potency. It's just like we were talking about psilocybin. That's a new thing. People, when you get a gram of, of, of mushrooms, each varietal is going to have more or less psilocybin. So mm-hmm. until they start testing it, one gram of mushrooms can be way more potent than another gram. A gram is the weight. Then the dosage is in another weight, right? So a gram is in the syringe. The potency, let's say just for easy, it's 90% THC. Then there's 900 milligrams per gram. But all grams are 1,000 milligrams. So 90%, 900. See what right. I'm saying? 900 so, milligrams. Exactly. So if you have a gram of RSO and it's 70% THC, there's only 700 milligrams. It's not 1,000 milligrams. It's one gram. Well, let's let's be 1,000. He's taking 900 milligrams. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dude. He's going down with it. Yeah, yeah. he's going down yeah. with it. Uh, well, but, you know, he built a tolerance for a year. I bet yeah. you the first couple of times he was on the sure. moon side. Yeah. To the moon. <clears throat> All right. All right, we got a live footage of Callie Blaze <laughs> as a kid. <laughs> oh. oh. That's this. I blew myself up with fireworks, so this definitely is me. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, man. Oh, was that a leaf pile? Was no, it's his pile? homie's campsite. <laughs> That'd be ice cold if he did that, right? Yeah, right. This Damn. is my homeboy's campsite. I'm playing, playing a prank on him. <laughs> Yeah, it does look like a fool. <laughs> right, doesn't it? it does. <laughs> that shit funny just shit. instantly caught fire. Yeah. You ever see people light up a leaf pile and they don't realize there's like gases as the, the, yeah. the leaves are decaying? It's like my cousins, man. Bro, it, it explodes like a bomb. In, in, in uh, Mariposa, California. Yeah. Dude, uh, you up there in the mountains and the sticks and they, they just love to blow shit up when we were young. 
So they would make these big piles of whatever and yeah. put some, like a stick of, uh, half a stick of dynamite in there and just, wow. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay, we're done. Now what's, what's next? What's to do? Just what? blow some shit up. Like, that's when you have nothing to do yeah. in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> that's crazy. These guys blew up a yeah. pile of, it, I swear to God, it looked like a capsite. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck your treehouse. Fuck your treehouse. <laughs> Bang. Your tree house. <laughs> That's war right there. Oh, hell yeah, that is. Some random stump in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> yep. We got a little oh, rodeo man. action sent in. Oh, oh here we go. Always crazy. Oh. oh, this is last man standing. There's nothing better. <laughs> Oh man, this is oh, the best. Oh man, do you know how crazy you have to fucking be to stand there? Yes. No, I would never. You know, and it's some, and it's some big boys that can't run. Oh man, look oh, at this. Don't get don't get horned. Yeah. Trap up. Yeah, no. How okay. much? How many pounds of pressure is that to you? Bro, and you know, oh, 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 you know how angry that fucking thing is, man. Oh, no, that bull is he's angry. So, he's so That's pissed. Crazy. That's piercing a lung. He got his nuts and dick <laughs> tied up. Yeah. Until they release him. Yeah. Oh, that's full on head. Like that's so. He's, it's, so that that beast is angry. <laughs> And it's going to take it out on everything on two legs. <laughs> I think, yeah, they keep him in the dark, too, so that, like, when they have his balls and everything in the clamp, they have his eyes covered, so then when they oh, release him into the bright, he's yeah. just, like, stunned. So, so good, for, good for him for fucking somebody else. Hell, yeah. <laughs> Did they do this in Squid Games? I don't know if they did was that. that there was a movie where they all had to sit at the table. They had like a table, and I think it was it was the end of something. I thought it was Squid Games. I don't know. Squid Games? Something like Not that. Not sure. I watched it. All right. What I else? I was going to say, we get 1,000 likes. Kelly Blaze will do that. Fuck yeah. you. No way. No, come on, right I'll now. Be like, yeah, I'll do that. Not that. You do the running of the bull? <laughs> I ain't doing that. No, hell no. He don't want to get horned. No way. No you don't want that horn, son. No. Nah, I'm good. No. All right. <laughs> What's happening? Good. It's your boy AD, man, right here at the Dr. Green Thumb Show, the highest motherfucking show in the world. You better believe that shit. What up, y'all? You know who it is. It's your man, Free Ricky Ross. Yo, what's up? Pseudo Zane, AK Diego. What's up? It's Banker Hayden. I'm at B Real TV. Yo, what up, everyone? It's Brian T City. Shout out to B Real TV. Thanks for having us. Shout out to B Real TV. It's first smoke of the day. Pack Odds Blackleaf. We're here at B Real TV. About to roll up. It was cracking this home with Little Rob right here on the Dr. Green Thumb Show, the highest show in the world, homeboy. Word up. Now we're going to get into the insane asylum. That means y'all got a comment, question, shout out, suggestion. We're here for it. But remember, there's a mix after this. C. Los and myself are going to be on Twitch, B underscore Real TV, and the home site, www.bereal.tv, for some video mixes right after this show. All right? The Dr. Green Thumb Mix Show. Come check us out. Now let's open the doors. Welcome to the Insane Asylum. All right, let's do this. We got Waves up in here saying, yo, thank you to Be Real. Dope to see John up in the building. I grew up listening to him. Yes. Oh, man, thank you. Big up, man. I appreciate you. Absolutely. And we got, uh, um, let's see, we got Rhino up in here saying, uh, so were you like 23 when you made the song with Tupac? Yeah, I think I was about 23. It sounds about right. It's hard to remember, man. Um, 90, 96, so, yeah. Probably, probably, you're probably right. What year were you born? 74. Was 72, born. depending on depending November. what month. November. Okay, oh, when yeah. did you record it? Uh, uh, Cali Blaze is doing the math. Yeah. <laughs> it's either 22 or 23, depending on the month, that's all. Yeah, probably 23. Yeah. We got, a, right. we got Foo up in here just saying, uh, P. Diddy, Puff Daddy, Puffy, oh, his yeah. house just got raided in Los Angeles, uh, Miami, and New York. Wow, three estates. Wow. Yeah. I heard about the two. I didn't know they hit this New York spot, too. Damn. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And they say it's on what? Uh, sex trafficking? Sex that trafficking allegations. Yeah. Wow. Whoa. I'll be wrestling us, Usher for that bowl of cereal. He shouldn't have told <laughs> about that. <laughs> Serious man that came back to bite him. Oh, man, no. Just, I didn't do it. Don't look at me like I did. <laughs> he I didn't wrestle nobody for cereal. I ain't wrestling nobody for no cereal. Here, take the damn cereal. Man. <laughs> <laughs> it means that much to you, have it. Yeah, there you <laughs> go. <laughs> Next. We got Clarissa saying, "Yo, John, I like your song with Cuban Link called uh, All I Want Is You." You guys yeah. did no track. Thank you, man. That's what's up, man. Thanks for mentioning that one because that's uh that's one of my songs, man. That I, you know. I'm a huge hip hop fan, you know, so 
when somebody comes out and they do something dope and um, I happen to run in, into them, you know, or, <clears throat> you know, in this case, it was uh, meeting Fat, Fat Joe and meeting Big Pun. And uh, we were supposed to link up in the studio and actually do a record together. And um, uh, Cuban came through and he was like, nope, they're not going to make it, but I'm here. And I was like, let's go. Let's go. I'm a fan of you too, bro. You know, the whole Terror Squad dope, and everything. So Terror Squad was in the building that night, man. And they, he was feeling, we were just going back and forth, feeling the energy and just, we wanted to do kind of like a, almost like a salsa uh, 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 influenced hip hop record. Um, right on. So yeah, it was, it was fun to make the track. I made the track and Cuban was vibing the lyrics and, just to watch that whole process come together was really he fun. was dope man yeah he he was dope and, and he he had the to me it was it was a lot like working with Pac in terms of his energy like yeah you know, he was just up you know what i mean and he was just it was just you could just feel that on the record he should have oh, did yeah. more i think yeah you know like mm -hmm. oh for sure his he voice is yeah. dope i love cut, his voice cuban cut. link's no joke man cuban yeah. link's voice is just dope he like, had that. bars dope voice style everything right yeah, yeah he absolutely. Did. Yep. Salute to Cuban Link. Salute to Cuban Link, for sure. We got Jeffro lying in the chat room. He's saying, damn, <laughs> John B. looks like me. <laughs> <laughs> we got Jeffro lying in the chat room. He lied to himself. Lying to himself. <laughs> That's cold, Colton. <laughs> we got Midget Mike asking, John, any tips you can tell us writing for After 7 and Tony? Oh, that's dope. Thanks for asking about that. I mean, um, those are both you know, dream collaborations for me being such an R&B fan uh, that when I got the, you know, the, uh, well, first of all, the opportunity to uh, collaborate with Babyface on the, at his house, I was playing a, a chord progression and he came in the room and he was just like, what's that? Cause I, he had a piano in his, in his uh, dining room. Mm -hmm. So I was just playing and he came through and he started singing this melody on top of the, Core progression, which ended up being the Tony Braxton song, but it was just recorded on like a little phone, you know, a little recorder, and uh, that was the last time I heard it. And then the next time I heard it was a uh, Tony Braxton, you know, with the Japanese Symphony Orchestra. Mm. It was oh, wow. <laughs> it was amazing to watch something that was just an idea just come alive like that, and uh, just to be kind of like a even that you know just being involved that small. You know that little on the on that project was just a, still an honor to be uh, involved it's, in that. And then after seven, after seven was uh, rest in peace, Melvin Edmonds. Uh, you know, rest in power, my brother. He's one of my favorite vocalists and also one of my favorite out of the brothers. All the you know the Edmonds families, uh, his voices still they'll always be classic. Um, you go back to. Songs like Ready or Not or you yeah. know, Can't Stop or, you know, oh, yeah. I mean, just the list goes on and on. So it was a dream come true to work with them in the studio and, uh, you know, Kevon, Melvin, uh, you know, they're just, they were, they're just amazing vocalists. So really easy to do. And, uh, yeah, the songs, they, they actually dug a lot of my uh, writing on that record. I did about four songs, I think, on that album, maybe, maybe five. Uh, the album is called Reflections. Word up. After Seven's Reflections. Put that work in. Oh, yeah. It's a good time, man. I'm going to check it out. Yeah, please. Yeah, it's good. So I, I want to say 90, 95, I want to say. 90, maybe 96. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We got Jay asking John, how was it hanging out with Rick Ross at his mansion? Wow, yeah, that was amazing. Um. It's really intimidating walking, you know, not walking, driving up in some in a driveway. I that mean, long. look at that. You know what I mean? With all that. <laughs> and it was at nighttime, so it was all Ooh. the lights were lit up. You know, he has these beautiful, beautiful, uh, I don't know if they're oak trees or whatever. They're just the, each one of them is so, uh, it's, it's like those old trees. Yeah. yeah. Been growing there for a long what time. What state? This is Atlanta. Okay. But he's got the whole perimeter like that. You know, yeah. I, I believe this was Holyfield's old house, oh, Evander wow. Holyfield's okay. old house. And uh, so, to say the least, you know, there's a huge security detail at the front. So oh, my God. Look at that. To, yeah, yeah, look at that. Put that in L.A., it's on 80 million. Oh, yeah. Look at that pool. Different. Yeah, so it was really quite something to, to roll up and uh, be welcomed like that. Um, 
and he showed respect and it was just nothing but love i mean it was like hey i want to do this record you know and i just told him the idea it was a really cool interaction um he seemed hype about it so and the, you know the proof is in what you do because I, I sent him the track and he just he put it he put it together man it, it I, I love what we did so that's yeah. what's up oh, yeah. yeah it's a fire collaboration and I was excited, man, when he when he said he'd do it. We got Jay again um, saying, also, you were talking about quantity versus quality in music. Do you ever go back and remake or add on to old, unreleased beats? Yeah, I do, actually. Stuff that's not released, absolutely. I did a little bit of that on this album, too. Oh, wow. um, Yeah, I went back. Because, you mm. know, some of, the, some of the programming that I did back in, like, 90... 798 on mm -hmm. the MPC 3000, you know, yeah. the Kai MPC 3000 with those specific sounds. <clears throat> you know, I may not have those sounds anymore. I might not, you know, know what shuffle I had the MPC set to on, right. on, on every yeah. track. Yeah, 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 and yeah. it just got the feel that I want, right? So what I did was I just, you know, now they have the technology now where if I have something that has vocals on it and I want to remove vocals, I can do that really easy. Yeah, yeah. stems. And because I can break stuff down into stems now, I was able to, like, use some of my old, you know, at, you know, stems, basically, old drums, old keys. And basically, I went back to an old song that I had back in, I want to say, I did that in, like, 98. I'm not going to say what the name of the record is, but um, it's on the new album. And uh, I was able to kind of import that into logic and just start producing on top of that that's just, dope you know updating you know and re-sing the vocal and you know maybe you change the lyric here or there but the hook stayed the same and it was even cool to use some of my old vocals too and and kind of like joggle between the old vocal and the new because yeah. my vocal back when i was in, in i don't know 98 i was probably 20 something <laughs> and uh my voice sounded way different it was way thinner Right. So it's almost like turning the pitch up on the <laughs> yeah. on the on the on the player, you know what I mean? Um when you compare my voice back then to my voice now cuz it's a lot thicker. Yeah. But it's really cool to kind of challenge myself now to kind of go back to those textures that I used to have back in the, you know, yeah, late 90s. Um and remind myself of what I used to do so I can kind of get in those vibes and yeah. kind of bring them back bring them back you yeah. know bring them back so yeah there's a little bit of that on the album a couple of tracks like that next up in here shout out to Callie Green Eyes thank you so much for your super chat we got Mad Way saying salute to the highest show all the 5150s big ups to Mad Herbs he's saying work we got Word. Sarah up in here saying, you guys are the best. Thank you for all you do. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Big up, Sarah. Much love. We got Philly saying, so super stoked for the ticket release for Cypress Hill and the London Symphony Orchestra. Real Come life on. imitates That's the crazy. Simpsons. Come on. That is so dope. Yep. So dope. Yeah. yeah, it's life imitating art. A lot of people say they predicted it, but it really wasn't a prediction because it wasn't like, well, I mean, we Simpsons. saw the episode. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? It's Simpsons. like, of course, we're like, hey, we should actually do this. Yeah, that's Bring rad, it. man. You know what I'm saying? And and uh, so it's not necessarily a prediction on in our case. It's more of a like an inspiration, inspired by. Mm. You know, um, oh, that I guess that's the best way to say it. But yeah, man, it's it's uh, at Royal Albert Hall. It's, Amazing. It's gonna be crazy. Ooh, legendary. Is, I mean, come on, man. Yeah, Dude, that's man. like. That's such an honor, bro. That is such an honor for me. Um, that's a level of Royal a sophistication, you know, in terms of the way that it, everything that it takes to put that together in terms of the, yeah, all of the orchestration. Yeah, they got to they got to write the music out. Yeah. and then arrange it. Yeah, and then you know, you rehearse it the day before, yeah. and then the day of. Yeah, then there's that break, and boom, balls out, go. And it's it's a it's an amazing experience, and then like you know, just seeing how the fans react to it, because like sometimes they're so stoked about it, they don't really know how to react. They like may want to mosh pit or jump and up and down, <laughs> but like they're like trying to also like absorb it for what it is. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. mm -hmm. you're going to see a symphony. By the name of that thing, I think you're gonna have people with those like spectacles, like golf clubs. Bring it. Yeah, like exactly. Hey, like, that's good, sir. Dressed to the <laughs> fucking nines, yep. bro. There'll you be monocles out there. That's right. Everything. Bring your fucking <laughs> monocles, son. Let's go. Bring it. 
Splendid, just splendid. Splendid, <laughs> indeed. Off clap. Spectacular. Off clap. <laughs> All right. We got Omega Man saying, be real. You guys were talking about mushrooms. I have had mushroom trips that started out bad, but they ended up turning out to be one of the best and most positive trips I've ever had. That happens, yeah. too. Yeah. Oddly yeah. enough, that happens. You might start real dark, and then it gets light. Yeah. yeah. But once you go through that darkness, that's what makes you feel better when you yeah. get out of it. You're like, yeah. oh, yeah. when you like, come up out of it. Yeah, every man. time, that's what it's been for me yep. too, yeah. as well. Yeah, Literally yeah, every time. Yeah. It's been first, it's been better than the other way where it starts right. great and then it <laughs> yeah. goes dark. Uh, Whoa. Right, right, yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. Fun times. <laughs> we got GG in the <laughs> so Super Chat sounds. just giving us a happy Monday. And we got Ask a Bum saying, John, are you surprised Pretty Girl wasn't bigger? He's saying the shit was fire. Oh, and he's fire. saying, funny story, that was the last song I heard before getting locked up for two years. Hmm. 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 I'm sorry about that, man. <laughs> <laughs> You didn't do it. Don't worry. It wasn't right. your fault. <laughs> he done fucked up. Fucked that's, up. A, that's a hell of a segue for this. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't know how to feel about it. I, mean, I, I fucking hate the song. If it was <laughs> no, um, pretty girl was a, a dope record. Yeah, it was. It was. Uh, it was the second song that I ever put out. Um, it was under the Edmonds Record Group. It's kind of a. That was a babyface song that he wrote and he produced himself. So it was yeah. 100% his, his production, his writing. His vision. Oh, wow. And his yeah. vision, I mean, really working with him was a, another dream come true because it was my absolute, that was sort of like, you know, I had mentioned earlier all the guys that I was influenced by, all of the, the, the OGs yeah. in R&B. Um, and so he was one of those guys. So being that I was, you know, having his personal uh, involvement, production, all of his, you know, his, the way that he would do things, you know, he would sort of put his, uh, his opinion on even how I would pronounce certain things or how I would, you know, articulate certain things. So there's a lot of his, his inflections or his style, his swag right. on those first two records, especially because they were, you know, that was sort of like his thing, you know? Yeah. And I really let him take, it wasn't letting him take the lead at this point. It was sort of like an honor to just be in the room yeah. and say, be the guy that I got to get produced because I was used to being the producer and being. He's like a mentor at that point. Yeah, he, yeah. Was, cool. he was an absolute mentor. But I, I, I entered the, the industry as a producer more than an artist trying to get on as, a, oh, as right. an artist. So, so I was wow. coming, coming in like already as a producer. So kind of knew what to do, right. say. But it was a, a pleasure to just be an artist in this sense. Yeah, that he was time. producing cool. you. And he was producing me? Are you kidding me? It was, I was just paying attention to all of the different ways. All the little things, yeah. You know? Little and nuances. Yeah, just all of his different suggestions that were, that just made, it still made an, it still makes an impression on me today yeah. the way I pro approach my music, so. As a yeah. session should be, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We got a Mizzle up in here asking, uh, my question is, what was your experience attending both? Is it John Muir and the School of Arts? Hmm. High school was, um, at Muir was, was cool, you know? Um, I remember the, uh, the talent shows were especially, like, fun for me because I got to share what I really do with people because I wasn't into athletics and I wasn't into anything else. I was into music. So I was going home to my drum machine and my keyboards and demoing up on my four track recorder. Cause oh, I was not to say that I had all that in ninth grade that didn't come till 10th grade, but it was acquiring each piece one by one. So like, you know, I got my synthesizer first that was sort of a sampler and that I could have my drums and all that and all that going with the sampler. So that was, kind of put the horse before the cart kind of thing. Yeah. And then you get the four track recorder mm -hmm. to demo everything up. And at that point, so I'm demoing pretty much everybody's little demo from around in my area in Altadena and Pasadena, you know? Um, and, uh, I became, I had a little name for myself in high school, you know, as like the music guy or whatever. So at, you know, in Muir, I remember they had a piano in the, uh, in the music hall. 
and I used to just stay on that piano at lunchtime. I just always be on that piano. So if you wanted to come check me and see what I was doing, I play a song that was popular on the radio, whether it was a hip hop song, whatever. I I learned the chords or whatever. But I remember uh, I get around. Tupac came out with the. It was the B side of a digital underground song uh, album that was, yeah. it was the Humpty mm-hmm. Dance or something like that. And uh, I learned those chords on the <laughs> piano and started playing them. You know, during the lunchtime, it. You know, at John Muir, that's a hell of a a, a memory. But we going back, so I might yeah. as well share a jam with you. You know. Yeah, that's dope. Next up in here, we got a. Uh, let's see, we got Scatter Brain. You guys were talking about playing piano. I really do love Billy Joel's piano playing next to Elton John. Yeah, Billy Joel's. He's badass. Man. Hell yeah! I gotta listen to both Elton John and Billy Joel more. Like, bring it. Because Elton John was the first rock star. You know. I like Elton John with the sunglasses, though. Yeah, that's like, what I'm saying. He was the rock. He, he was the icon like that. Like yeah. you know what I mean? Like first, not not being af- afraid to just wear whatever the fuck. What he an outrageous <laughs> ass look! Yeah. Just, you know what I mean? But his main instrument was a piano, and he made that a rock star. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like he, you know, yeah, right. Very few could do it. That's very I, like sort of like Liberace or something like that, but not cool. You know, in a sense of like, I don't know. I you know, you think about this big piano, and you can't move yeah. it around or anything. Yeah, it's not mobile. Yeah, which is the reason why I play a guitar on stage. I don't know if you don't. Yeah, yeah. Nice. But I, I actually, you could move around with the I guitar can, for yo, sure. It's yeah. kind of, you know, you, you don't, you don't want to have it the, on the whole time. <laughs> you don't want to have it on the whole time because it's kind of funny. Yeah. But to just be able to solo, as you know, like, a, mm-hmm. like if I go to like a, a guitar patch or if I go to like a, a Moog's lead sound, that's cool. And I can just walk around the stage. I don't have to be put in one place. I can, you know, move around the stage. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but not for very long. I just, usually I set that thing down and play it like a regular piano, you know, because that's what, you know. But it's cool that you could pick it up. But it is cool that you could pick it up. <laughs> yeah. Because you can't pick up a grand piano. You cannot. Hell no. <laughs> Bad on the back. You got to hulk out, son. Oh. Yeah. So bad for your back. But but Elton John was the was the goat though he was was the man and he is the man yeah we got Benny Rico saying Yo B can't wait for the grand opening of Doctor Green Thumbs in Fresno yes coming soon get ready we're gonna be dropping some insane lithium down there too so um, be prepared smoke man awesome. Next up in here, we even got our own Javi Lopez. He's saying, big ups to John B. You were getting down on Saturday on the guitar and killing it. <laughs> you were there. <laughs> yep. Javi Lopez went to see you, son. Yeah, That's Max. what's up. <laughs> Hell yeah. Good looking. And next up in here, we got uh, the Suplex Shogun Jackson saying, John B., you are a legend for real. Great seeing that you're still doing good and great seeing you on the show. Oh, man. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's good to be back. I tell you, this new music being, you know, uh, you know, release finally, it takes a lot to, you know, to do it now. You know, it, mm-hmm. it, it always took a lot, but it, a lot of uh, what the tools that you need, you know, are videos, you need radio, and, uh, and you need touring. And none of that is, is for free. It all costs. It money. all costs, yeah. But you know what makes it all um, possible is you guys, the fans. Because if you didn't come to the shows, if you didn't buy the music, if you didn't provide you know, me with the lifestyle that I've had all these years, <clears throat> I wouldn't be able to continue to do this music like I, I do. So it's a real gift for me to continue to love what I do, but at the same time, it's a gift to y'all who stuck with me all these yeah. years. And just the relationships, is, 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 it goes back, back and forth and it's, uh, you know, it's, you show me love, so I got to keep showing you guys love. Absolutely, 100%. So thanks for still being down. You know what I mean? That's love. We got my favorite stash, my weed, giving us the hashtag Be Real TV, saying salute to John B. in the highest show. And we got Javi G. saying shout out to John B. They Don't Know was a dope jam as well. Mm-hmm. Jeez, man. Thank you. Thank you. Big shout. Yeah, They Don't Know was, uh, I think that song, if I don't do that song at a show, they probably they, want their money back. They, want, they need that song. <laughs> they had to have that. Yo. Big shout Tim Kelly and Bob Robinson on, on the track on that. Um, probably the most fire track like I ever heard, like right away where I knew, like, 
this is a hit. This yeah. is about to be my my record right now. It's great when the track gives you that feeling off yeah. the rip before you even write it. Like, oh, man, this is it right here. Yeah, Damn. yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, it's 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 just it's one of those things where <clears throat> when you can tell a story based off the track, what it's telling you. You know what I mean? It's just it just speaks to you, right? Yeah. You know, absolutely. You, you, the lyrics just come because you're like, all right, this is this is feeling like this, like boom. So that track felt real kind of emotional uh, when I when I heard it, but it was it was more like a track that had like a little bit of a bounce to it. So I wanted to kind of talk my shit, you know what I mean? And at that time, <clears throat> you know, I was going through some some stuff with people hating on me, obviously. You know, we're always going to have people on the side saying this, saying that. When you're doing good, there's going to be some hate to go with the good. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. yeah. So the song is really addressing that. And uh, if you're going to have people that call themselves friends or call themselves, you know, at that, at that time it was a girlfriend, you know, uh, you know, if she's going to call herself or my girlfriend, be with me. You know, I was letting her know this yeah. is what it is. They don't know. So listen to me. Pretty self-explanatory. Don't listen to what people say, but I I didn't know it was gonna resonate with people in the way that it has all these years, you know, and uh, really be kind of like the song that that sort of is uh I think the one song that people connect with connect with the most. Yeah, like everything, I, anything I've done. So yeah, still goes, man. Yeah, but I want to big up my man Tim Kelly right now because uh he was. The primary person I want to say in the magic of what made that that song, I mean, Bob Robinson, I want to give him his flowers as well. He played Rhodes on the song, and uh, and he also came up with the part that you're my angel. <laughs> you know that yeah. that's the part everybody sings. You know, so like, but uh, but Tim, he we still we still make music together, and um, recently he sent me some beats, and uh, man, I'm telling you. Gonna create some what, new I, shit. Huh? I don't know what's going about, about to happen. I already know some new shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's, oh, yeah. it's dope. To man. back up this new shit right here, he, bring it. He, he got fired. He got fired. That's Tim Kelly's up. still doing his thing. Yeah. Yeah. Dope. Yeah. We got Josh in here asking John. You were on tour uh, where all those Milwaukee's GDs, I think it's Gangster Disciples, chased Pac down um, the street and was gonna kill him. Weren't you there? Oh, uh, no, I don't know about none of that. <laughs> <laughs> People be coming up with some crazy Dude, shit. Yeah, <laughs> they come with some, sometimes, some stuff. <laughs> Next. We got GB saying, salute to John B. Great show, positive vibrations to the table, giving us the hashtag BeRealTB. Word up. Yeah. Salute. Peace. Peace. We got Curious George saying, legend at the table, John B., you're a big part of my childhood. Hell yeah. That's what's up. And the last one so far, we got a uh, loved him kill us saying tuning in a little late. Shout to everyone on the show. Hey John, I like the work you did on DJ Quick's Book of David album. Oh, Any yeah. stories with that? Uh, wow, that's what I'm talking about, man. Man, this show is dope. Thanks, These questions. <laughs> These questions, man. This has got my this has got me pumped right now. Oh yeah. Because it's a badge of honor to talk about it. You know yeah. what I mean? All the collaborations and stuff like that. Book of David, I'm currently working with DJ Quick right now. Um, he's actually finishing my album up. Oh, uh, I can't wait to hear that because yeah. I already know Quick I mean, is a genius, bro. I mean, he's such a sonic, I call him like a sonic god, you know what I mean? Because he's literally like a one-stop shop. You could get everything if you want. Everything. Uh, with, with Quick in yeah. terms of like an artist to rap on your song, a, a, a an engineer to mix and yeah. engineer the song. A producer to make the beat you know what i'm saying and he and does everything so he does everything yeah and so but in this case i needed his ears i needed him to let me know what am i missing with this track like this is right so here's the stems can you just mix this song for me and just get this sounding right and let me tell you something my song went from sounding like it it, it sounded like a a different song when he when he put his thing on it it was like a brand new record is like everything changed and it's not i'm not just saying that i mean it's really really sonically different he's than, a wizard man than what i was doing and i and i i knew that he he was dope but every time i work with him he always surprises me and does something that it just makes me go god how'd you do that let me yeah. see what let me watch let me pay a little closer attention <laughs> yeah you know what i mean so yeah it's a pleasure <laughs> to continue to work with him but back going back to what your question was about the book of david 
uh, man, that was our first time really collaborating together in the studio. And uh, man, he he's a type of he's a type of a collaborator where he he just wants to be comfortable. You know, we we were making music, but we were at his house, so he was able to make food. You know, he'll be cooking in the kitchen. You know, and and it's just a very comfortable atmosphere. Yeah. So that that we have like probably four or five joints on on that album that we did, just from just having. It's that time to collaborate and, and, and just be comfortable and just, hey, put that track up, man. Let me, I got something for that. You know, I put that other one up. You know, I got something for that. And uh, we did uh, the song Do Today, um, which is a fire record on there that, uh, you know, we kind of came up with that hook. And we were talking about being from L.A., you know, just what are you going to do today? If you're not from here, what are you going to do when you get here? Yeah. And what do today? What are you going to do today? Right. You know, and, uh, and then there's a record on there called Hydromatic that we did that's uh it's you gotta hear it it's dope i, I actually rapped on that that was my first, right. first song i ever getting them bars off oh, yeah. all right well he wrote he wrote my rap mostly he wrote my rap for me you know i was just oh, like what yeah. am i gonna say you know but he's like i i got you so you just and uh so i did it you know but um there's another song on there called real woman that is that's one of my favorites on there and that's that's where i really felt like we were we were doing something I didn't even expect us to do, because it almost sounded like the track almost sounded like something high tech would do or something like yeah. Jay, Jay Dilla influenced kind of nice. Um, and for Quick, that's a little different for me that you know they, I didn't know that he had that variety of oh, yeah. styles. He'll surprise I mean? you, man. He got absolutely some, yes, yeah, he, for sure. And the and the new album that he's got coming, man, is let me tell you, he played it for me the other day at the house and. Sh- uh, it's fire. No. It is beyond what anybody is even gonna expect or even think because um, he just always keeps you surprised. Yeah, he keeps it interesting. Yeah, he keeps it interesting. Right. Mm-hmm. You know what yeah. I mean? So slappers on there, man. Nothing but bangers on there. Or, uh, yeah. I think you got one more, Bolton. Oh, uh, uh, let me Whoa, see here. What was that? Uh, <laughs> I think that's it. That's all I see. Okay. Yeah. Heebie jeebie. Uh, oh no, that's old. Sorry, my yeah, bad. It's old. All right, hey, we want to thank y'all for getting down with us today on the Dr. Green Thumb Show. Um, as you do Monday through Friday, how we do this 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on the start, 5 Eastern. But on Fridays, it's 5 p.m. on the start, um, 8 Eastern. And we thank everybody that's been vibing with us on the, the Friday nights. But um, I most especially want to thank my man, John B., for coming thank and sitting in. First of many times, my friend. You got to come back. Absolutely, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's my honor, man. My pleasure, bro. Thank you. This is so dope. Yeah. Everything, man. Word up, man. Absolutely, bro. You got any shout outs you want to give? Big shout out to my family out there, everybody who's rocking with me on this album. I want to big up my man Tank for being with me on this new single. I want to big up DJ Quick, of course, for finishing off this album with me. Big up my wife for making it all possible. It's Vibes Elect Music is my my label and uh, our label, and uh, yeah, hats off to all my uh, my guys on my team right now that are helping me at radio. Ken Wilson, I want to thank Ken you. Wilson. Tell him I said what's up, He's, man. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's see. I want to thank um, I want to thank Sean, my man, my publicist, um, and uh, yeah, there's. Probably a lot of other people I want to thank, but I want to thank you, my friend, and you and you for doing this for, with me today and uh, oh, yeah. the opportunity to build with you guys. This has been really dope. It was an honor, my oh, friend. Absolutely, yeah. my bro. Word up. Yeah. C minus. Shout out. Uh, shout out to everyone here at the table. John, a pleasure to, to man. So good to see you, brother. So good to see you, my yeah. man. Oh, yeah. I got to get you the right one. Oh, yeah, that's, that's what I'm talking what, about. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, shout out to the Treehouse crew. Shout out to everyone that watches. You can follow me at C minus fan four on all the social medias. I will be on Twitch tonight doing the rock mix. So check me out probably like around six or seven. So, uh, yes, look forward to it. Uh, everyone have a great one. What's up, Bolton? Shout out to the Insane Asylum. Thank you guys so much. Shout out to Ray Morning Shot Films. Shout out to the Dominator. And uh, what's up, Blaze? Shout out to everybody who came to Ask the Club on Saturday night for uh, Bobo. We'll talk about that one easier on Wednesday. Um, shout out to John for coming through, kicking all the old stories. Great to hear. Uh, everybody, Treehouse Crew, Insane Asylum, 5150s. Much love. Keep love and positivity in your life always. Swallow that.